morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, September 23rd, 2023, to order. The time is 1 p.m. Our first item on the agenda, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd ask that everyone please rise. As always, these meetings are recorded for audio and video. So I ask that everyone, including myself, including right now, uh, set your phones to uh, silent or vibrate so that we do not have to break up the flow of the meeting. For anyone interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Anyone wishing to address the board uh, can do so by coming up to the podium. And we ask that you speak clearly directly towards the microphone so that it's captured on record, also stating your name and address. I'll open the floor to public comments, but I don't think we have any that we don't have anybody on the zoom and we have very few people in the audience. So no one on zoom yet. I'll let you know if that changes. Um, so first item for discussion is the Tulpy police donation. I don't know if we have help that or we have oh, we the have, chief of we police have, chief here. Of police. So, so I'm, I'm come, not. Yeah, come please. on down. Yeah. 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 Got a pipe in crisis right here. Um, and if you could point the uh, point the little boost next word, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now, if it's wheels, it's your fault. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, I won't take up too much of your time. I am Brian Dronick, the police chief of Topahawken. Since I've been promoted, you don't see me at the township meetings anymore. I'm pretty much stuck day shift. Um, so the reason why I'm here today is I was wondering, depending on a few different things, on how long you guys are planning on keeping us. Um, We've been working on updating the department ever since I've been promoted a year ago. Um, and uh, we've made a lot of changes. And I am here today to see if you um, have donated in the past, which we are greatly thankful for. Um, I came here seeing if you would be willing to um, possibly purchase tasers for us. Um, the tasers that we have now are outdated. Um, if anything would happen to them, they will not fix them. Um, it's pretty much we're out. Um, I do have. Do we have quotes? Here. I do have a quote. Uh, unfortunately, it's only one quote because uh, where we get tasers from is Axon, and Axon kind of like has the market for everything. Mm -hmm. Um really can't get tasers anymore one department had a thing called phasers and phasers went out of business um right now i we currently our officers are carrying body cameras through taser uh axon uh we do have a dash camera ordered for all the police cars um they will sync together and with these new tasers they were also synced even further together um, I had the quote broken down for structure for five years because they are a little expensive. Um, okay. How many do I have here? Um, well, one? Uh, honestly, like mm -hmm. Irene, you and I can probably share. As long mm -hmm. as you get one to sue for record, and then the rest yeah. of us can pass for ransom, yeah. minimum two. Okay, I have plenty. I uh, okay, care. yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's it. And you said five years? It is a five year uh year. Um with the five years in this plan that you guys see here is it's gonna supply us with four tasers. Um they're the new taser tens. Um it will supply us with all the training cartridges we need, all the uh active cartridges we need. Um, there, anything would ever happen to them, Axon would replace them for five years. Uh, other than that, um, it is broken down. The first, the first, uh, first month's payment we do in March, which is a little higher um, because of the training and everything else. And then it breaks it down to pretty much $3,600 a year for the next four years. 
Okay. Uh, Just as a question, is this, because uh, I know you guys support multiple municipalities, is this the total cost is going to be potentially making a similar request to the other municipalities too? Or we do not cover any other mis municipalities. So, oh, so it's just Marion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know, um, uh, Melissa, if I could ask you, um, have you, you, you've been reaching out to, is it actually for the most part about grants and stuff like that? I know we had briefly talked about uh, other grants and stuff and having this wish list. So um, I think I spoke to the Tulpe Secretary, is it Katie? Kathy. Kathy, Kathy. Forgive me. Um, if there's at some point you and I and Kathy and John, well, Melissa, this is going to go back to school, but if we could figure out something over your general needs that so we could start looking at grants, um, you have your contact person. Is it just Ashley at the county? Ashley. Yeah. Um, whatever we could do. The other thing is, the, like, I know we had, I know John and I talked about it a lot. We talked about getting grants in general. Um, so, so if you could keep me in loop, if we could, if Melissa's the one who, who's helping us with the narrative. If you, if we could put together a narrative that combines the needs of Marion plus Tulpe, then I think maybe we could go forward with having a bigger wish list because I know we had talked about MDT and other other things. We want to get you as much help as we possibly can. Money, of course, is, is obviously the issue with us. You don't have to sit through the rest of the meeting, but um, but you know we want it. We want to help. You know, I want to do as much as you can. Obviously, you know, John, you know me, we'll get you, you know, please keep in contact with me. I want to do as much as I possibly can. Maybe Melissa can help me out with that. So, you know, I, I'm for this. We're going to be working on our budget. So I mean, it, it's a definite yes for me. It's safety, safety for the officers. I don't know if you guys are aware, our fines have gone up significantly. Um, these guys are out there all the time. Um, they have been very diligent about uh, lots of issues in our community, which I had no idea about. Um, and I can't thank you and your officers enough for, for doing all the things that you do for us as a community. The guys stay over late, they, they respond, they talk to our residents. You guys are wonderful, so. Thank you, we try. Uh, what, what do you wanna say something, John? You gotta come up to the microphone. Yeah, um, I'm always telling him what to do. Yeah. Just... Now I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Um, just so you so you know, the Axon is a sole source provider. Also, it doesn't have to go out to bid and co-stars everything else that's out there, but they are the only makers of that. So yeah. it doesn't need three quotes to say okay. there's you can get a letter sole source provider. So okay. Yeah. So so again, keep keep me in the loop. You know, I know we had talked about a wish list about a year and a half ago or so. Um, keep me in the loop. Melissa's gonna, I'm gonna beg her to take her time off, you know, when she's not here in the office to educate me so I can start making more phone calls and doing the work that needs to get done. I know it's kind of been on the back burner for John and I with, with this issue. I want to put it towards the front so we could, we could get you guys help. We could at least put the effort there and see what happens. So. And actually, if you could email a wish list that your department has, that would be great. So I can start narrowing down grants off the list. Okay. We can compile it together. We can compile it with what John needs and we find the grant. Perfect. I'll grab your email address then. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't have anything else for you. Thank you. We appreciate everything you, you do. Is we'll... there any more questions I can help answer? No, we'll, we'll figure out how to fit this into the budget because we want to make sure you obviously have the right tools for the job for keeping yeah. everybody in the township. Yes. Yeah. Um, the thing with the new tasers is it's a uh, it's a single file file probe so you have more control over it. The old tasers the way we have now comes out in a V. So if one hits your target and one misses, you have to pull the whole cartridge out, put a new cartridge in. By that time, they could be a lot closer to you. Where this is... Um, Kind of like a chamber full of single probe darts. So if you miss one, you don't have to reload. You have one already ready to go. Wow. Um, evidence wise, it works again with the dash cam, body camera. Uh, every cartridge that is fired is serialized and is kept with evidence.com through Axon. Um, I do know that one of our officers, probably about Four months ago, almost got hit by a car. Um, he deployed a taser, and it wasn't successful because of the whole spread probe. You don't get them far enough apart, and you're too far away from the 
individual, it's not going to help. Um, currently, we also updated all of our shotguns. We got rid of our lethal shotguns. It was going to be uh, less lethal than the shotgun. That is awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please keep us in the loop, update us on things, because again, the more you share with us and we share with our community, it gets a better response from them too. So, we'll we'll do. Yeah. And um, I don't know, I don't remember if there was a date on this. Um, there is an expiration date. It's the end of the year. Um, things go up substantially every year. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll look and see how to fit the. Yeah, between this month and next budget. month, we should be doing our budget meetings. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Very nice to see you. You can leave, you can leave when it gets too boring or doze off okay, in the yeah. corner. So, yeah. If you need to test those, Chief. Come Thursday. We'll yeah, provide exactly. you. Yeah. Some <laughs> Sorry, I seem very. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. More. Maybe, Little, maybe I can get him money. <laughs> yeah, maybe I think him. the the ideal thing would be we figure out how to fit this yeah. into the budget. Yeah. Because yeah. then if we can replace it in the budget, that's yeah. Yeah, not funny essentially. Yeah. But we want to make sure what's talked about with the fire company getting the training or getting the equipment, same thing with the police. We want to make sure the people that are keeping everybody safe, whether it's the road crew, the police, the firefighters, et cetera, that they have the right stuff for the job, that they're not trying to Mickey Mouse something mm -hmm. together and doing something out of the, the right intention, but potentially hurting people in the right. process or getting right. hurt themselves because of it. So I'm yeah. I'm in favor of this. We just got to figure out how to, how to fit that particular puzzle piece in the budget. I apologize. I, I just quickly printed up a copy of the budget so Peter could glance at it with me. I'll get that in an email to everyone. And just as an example, our fines and fees more than doubled since last year. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. And then the Comcast franchise that also increased significantly so that's, that's yeah it's, it's, again just to, yeah. to jump to that topic Anything. for a second that was yeah. money up front for paying the attorney but I, that's going to more than pay for itself oh, yeah. for the yeah. life of the agreement yeah. yeah that was money well spent um, okay uh, we have our friends from hydroterra here to discuss the next item on the agenda or several items on the agenda which is the act 537 um last month's meeting uh a motion was made to approve and submit the new milestone compliance schedule to the Department of Environmental Protection. The motion was also made to authorize Hydroterra to prepare a special study for the low pressure sewer design. And uh, the intermunicipal agreement is still currently under review by the WSA. It's, it's going to take as long as it takes. Um, so, Joe, Kim, if you have some things that you'd like to approach the, the podium, please do. I'm approach. I'm going to tell you that the uh... Saturday meetings are much more enjoyable than Thursday. Yeah, this is uh, true. Yeah, I guess um, I attended virtually last month and really wished I could have been here last month because I felt, you know, that I was. No, 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 you, no you, you were, you were fine. Great, other, yeah. There were other elements of spiciness in the audience. Well, I understand. I know how attention can. Kim <laughs> Uh, thanks for having us today. I, I really appreciate uh, you allowing us to come in on Saturday and giving up your time. There were a couple items that Kimberly uh, and I felt very strongly about trying to get in front of you uh, today. So again, thanks for that. Um, just wanted to give you a little bit of update on, on the 537 plan. And uh, not sure where this might fall on the agenda, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. So the Technical work. <laughs> well, that's English language, right? Spelled the same. Spelled the same. Yeah. Concepts. All right. I apologize for the fuzziness of the table on the left hand side. And for those of us that are, you know, maybe over yeah, 40. A magnifying so, glass might be needed. No, I can I can read this. So I'm looking at this and the majority of boring sample. Yeah. And the lowest one appears to be 
Yeah, well, there was one on there, one boring where they did not encounter rocks for 20 feet. So like that, was the, the, that was the good one. Yeah. These, these are Yes, yeah, so we're this kind of confirms what we were afraid of and why we wanted to do the low pressure system is that would increase construction costs astronomically. Yes. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, we uh, did a real rough calculation uh, based on uh, the depth of, of, of rock, bedrock that you see on the table compared to the approximate uh, depth of the gravity sewer. You can see that there were some areas that uh, we are approaching 20 feet in depth, that's around B6 and B7. Um, they actually had pretty deep bedrock, but we went back and did a rough calculation. We we were estimating if we went with the gravity sewer, it'd be about 8,000 cubic yards. Anybody knows what cubic yard is, right? 8,000 cubic yards of rock. And uh, after making a couple phone calls to some local contractors, um, they were saying anywhere from 150 to 325 dollars a cubic yard for removal. So uh, I'm sorry, that means two, <laughs> two, two, two and a half million dollars someplace just around there. Bad yeah. yeah, just for rock. I mean, that's over the 10 million. That, that's the 20 that was, 20 percent over just for for rock removal yeah so it's a huge i think that makes a very yeah. loud statement in a, in a special study to dep okay. um now if we go down and we were to go ahead with the low pressure system of course we'd be bringing that whole entire sewer system up out of the ground we uh used a five foot deep figure because um generally we want to stay three to four feet deep but there will be some areas where we have to dive under utility. So we use the five foot depth. And with that figure, we're looking at about 500 cubic yards. So, um, you know, less than the 10 yeah. and estimate that around hundred thousand dollars still in addition to the cost, but, uh, mm -hmm. certainly makes the low pressure system much more. To use the word appetizing, although I was going to say palatable. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Attain attainable. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of where we're at. I do. I I did review the draft uh, geotech report yesterday. Everything seemed to be in play. I expect to uh, receive the final geotechnical report uh, beginning of the week. I'm glad to share it with you all. It's not too difficult to read, but you know there might be some things that. And supervisors look through it. I think it might come in handy as we approach some public meetings. Uh, it'll help you understand a little bit more of what they do out there. It's really not rocket science by any stretch. They're just drilling down until they run into something hard. And then, you know, that's what they're calling refusal, which you'll see on the table. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know that the board was hoping to have a meeting in October, a public meeting in October. We have uh, that scheduled for the ninth. Yeah. No, we don't. Okay. So yeah. the date that they gave us was the ninth. So I'm not. They gave us a couple no, of dates. That anything after the ninth is available. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, my wife's uh, hundred-year-old, ninety-nine-year-old grandmother didn't quite make a hundred, so we we're going to be out in Wisconsin on that week, uh, and a little bit. In addition to that, the schedule that was submitted to DEP actually suggested November. Okay. So if we can hold off to November, uh, I think that would be the best because I'll be in a position with a special study to have it in front of you guys for uh, for adoption or at least consideration uh, prior to the meeting. If we did it in October, I'd, I think I'd get that. Okay. So. So can you follow up with them and see if there are yeah, good dates the, or Melissa? Yeah. yeah the yeah. other thing was is we have to fill out the form submitted and then it has to be approved at a board meeting, school board meeting. Yeah, so November is probably better. Yeah. And there we think their board meetings are the they have two the second and third, and third Wednesday. Wednesdays of the month, which is so confusing. Yeah. Uh, but 
Yeah, I. I, I mean, multiple dates, multiple requests. Yeah, you want, but and then whichever to, one they they yeah, are like okay if with. We, if we get it in submitted in October, then yeah, we're yeah. pretty much guaranteed. I mean, whatever. honestly, at this point, we want to stay away from obviously the Thanksgiving time frame. Mm -hmm. But if we just pick a range of dates and say, hey, we're okay with these dates, just pick one. So if they say like, yeah, November fifteenth, it's a Wednesday night, we're okay with it. Then we just. Pretty. Did they say November? Yeah. Yeah. For Wes on the trip. Yeah, for Wes. We're following your agenda, um, Peter. I don't. Believe yes. No. No. Please. There. Please. Uh, so the proposed well ordinance, uh, we did reach back to DEP. Um, Tim at DEP kind of suggested that the only reason it was even in the recommendation or the approval letter from DEP is because it was buried back in some section. He said, you know, we didn't create this generally. So, and his his uh, recommendation was simply ignore it. Okay. Uh, and that's what I intend to do in the, in the special study. Is it all? There is a discussion about the sewer management program in the special wait, wait, study. Wait, hold on. So, do, you, do you have this conversation recorded in writing, email, anything? Because I don't want it to come back and bite us. Yeah, I have a phone <laughs> log that I generally okay. use for every telephone conversation. Okay. And uh, let me know, and I'll I'll make sure that you all get that. Yeah. So you guys can have it for your record. Yeah. yeah. We just we don't. To that point, we don't want to see a situation where, let's say, like Tim is out on leave, or I don't think he's uh, it's just concerned of him taking another position, or he's not retirement age, or anything like that. But if Tim's not in the picture, somebody comes in fresh and goes, "Oh, this is on as a requirement." We want to make sure that we have something that says, "Like, yeah. no, not actually." Um, with the the well ordinance, I would say let's still talk to Colin. I think it's not a bad idea to have something like that on the books that does stipulate certain isolation distances and things like that as well. Um, we don't have to be overbearing about it, but just set kind of a, a baseline of things. You need to have a certain distance between like, and I, I don't know how much of that I mean, is enforced. Just, I don't know if it's a state rule. It's my understanding that if somebody builds a new house mm -hmm. now, you, the well and the septic system have must to be 100, be 100, feet, 100 feet, feet apart. apart. I don't know where that rule actually sits or if it's anecdotal because I, when I dug the well for the one property, that's it. Like, it's yeah, please, please. That for 73. Okay. 71 through 73, and that uh, governs all off systems and states that the well and the septic have to be properly isolated. isolated. Okay. okay. So then, really, the I guess the question would be for Colin is what. Um, what would potentially be in there that is already included somewhere else? Because if we don't need to do it and it's already codified elsewhere in like the the act, then don't don't waste the effort, don't spend the time or the money. But if there is something that like yeah, this this is a thing with wells that nobody has, where you know you gotta make sure that it's you can dig a well, it has to be isolated, but you also have to make sure that it's potable water coming out of it. Um, you know. Whatever, I'm just throwing an example out there. If there is actually a good solid reason to do it, then let's do it. Otherwise, let's, as Tim Wagner said, let's just ignore it. Um, so then uh, I can tell you that uh, some of the ordinances that I looked at prior SVP suggested that they're really just trying to protect the wellhead. So, you know, they wind up driving a casing down previous years that was kind of lax. Uh, casings driven into the ground and, and there's grout that's actually put in there. So it kind of seals the well head, any surface water that might get down in there. I think that's, you know, one of the things you might see in an ordinance. Unfortunately, Berks County doesn't have any. They don't, they don't have a, or any, that's kind of why it goes down. I mean that based on that, that might be worthwhile. Obviously, it wouldn't be anything that affects existing wells, but for future wells that we have kind of the, the standard in place of what needs to be there. The question that we have to do is then how do we how do we enforce that? Because it becomes almost like a sewer management program question. Every time somebody gets a well, are we sending out rafts? Are we sending out hydroterra? Are we sending out? But yeah, you know, but currently a well doesn't require. It permits. doesn't require right. any permit, uh, other than a zoning permit. You do have to put a zoning. 
I, I had to put a zoning permit in for mine. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. When I did mine, I had to make sure that the, the well was not being placed. It's like a fence. You got to make sure that it's not being placed too close to somebody else's property or on somebody else's property. Um, but yeah, it's it's a simple zoning permit, but that's the only permit that I know of that's involved with digging a well. Um, yeah, but we'll, we'll talk to Colin about that. And it, again, just to bring everything to a fine point, if we don't need to do it, we won't do it. But if there's a benefit, then we'll move forward and we'll appreciate any and all input that you guys can give us. Yeah, there's plenty of samples out there. If you were to do it, I don't think it's a big mountain. I think there's plenty of samples. Good news is that at least my discussion with DDP is not required mm -hmm. to be in a special. Okay, excellent. Great. That was good news. And let's see, sewer management program, just to give you a little bit of update on that, Kimberly and uh, Kristen. I've been working pretty diligently to try and get everything queued up for a, uh, a launch next month. Uh, the guidance booklet um, that uh, was prepared by the previous SEO was revised. Kimberly shared uh, comments with Colin. I believe we're on the way. There'll be a couple small questions left, but I feel like Colin was uh, in agreement with our revisions clarified some things there was a definite schedule conflict so when we said one thing the schedule was really vague and just didn't okay. at any rate so we had that uh, that booklet revised uh i'm, th I'm thinking the hope is that that gets up the website so everybody can take a look at it and in its final form i'm sure kimberly can get that over to sue posting on the website. You have it in a, like, I know this one's scanned, but do you have it in a digital copy, like a Word document? Yeah, can you, can you send that over so I can take a look at it? Yeah. <laughs> so Colin has that booklet in final review. I will okay. be glad to send you, send that draft that he's looking at right now so you can take a look. Okay, and then once it's approved, we would have the next post. Fantastic, thank yeah. you. Okay, so next item, also also with you guys, is the um, revised on-lot sewage disposal ordinance. At last month's meeting, a motion was made to authorize Kozlov of Stout to advertise the on-lot sewage disposal systems ordinance after making necessary corrections in conjunction with your input. Um, saw in the packet here that there was a revised ordinance. The only thing that I had a question on, and I don't think it's going to be, I'll say make or break in that sense, was we have specifically spelled out in there that uh, the pumper shall uh, electronically submit and update the information and documentation enumerated in section 12.3 via email to TerraTracker. Um, would we maybe want to change that to, I'll say be- Electronic okay, means. Uh, well, I mean, submitted yeah. Yeah. to uh, the sewer management program authority or SEO through the approved mechanism. Because I, I don't want to say email only to have us yeah. change it in a couple of years and be like, oh, it's a web portal now. Yeah. That there's a form that you just fill out, you hit submit. Um, like I, I want to make sure that we're we're being structured enough that it's it's understandable and rigid in the sense that people are going to do what we want them to do, but not so specific that every time we change the mechanism, we have to update the ordinance. Um, so the email is referring to the electronic submittal of Terror exactly, Tracker? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you say electronic submittal. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, or, I wouldn't or, even say or, or just say, say submittal. Submission, of submission of information through the township approved channel or mechanism, or whatever. Um, that, that's my only critique on that because, like I said, working in technology, technology changes all the time. So we don't want to say like, yep, do it through email. And then like a year from now, you guys get this really neat system where again, like you do it through a web portal or you can do it on a smartphone or something like that. And it's yeah. automated and you go, oh crap, well we have, yeah. it's, it says it has to be yeah. through email. Yeah, and, and not to nitpick, but yeah. we, I mean, I've been down that road before where if you're, if you don't board it right, someone's going to pick something out of it and then it's going to. Yeah, like that's, that's my only my only criticism everything else in there was yeah. fantastic 
Yeah, I think now. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, and um, I would like to make sure we're clarifying. I think that is the resolution language. The ordinance yeah. should be general, and then the resolution is very, well, it's a lot more straightforward to repeal and change. So the idea was to keep the ordinance itself general to amend the SMP, and then the resolution has the specific language of what form we're using to manage the SMP. Is that worded correctly, John? Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. It, it is in the resolution. It is in the resolution. Okay. So I'm, I'm functionally okay with that. We can always change the resolution at any time. Yeah. 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 Yeah, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, general language in there. Yeah, yeah that we're, we're pointed enough that it, it says that we want you doing it the way that we we prescribe, but not so locked in that we say like it has to be this email address. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I yeah. I, I, I read it through a couple of times. I, I think it's it fits the bill of things, both the ordinance and the resolution. Um, next thing then would be the adoption of the uh, sewer uh, sewage management program resolution. Uh, we can't adopt this until the ordinance is adopted. Um, this will specify all the information like we just went through for the, the documentation required by the pumper on the pumper report. We will need to send out letters to the property owners notifying them of the change. And I think before, and keep me honest, Sue, before we adopt this, we have to hear back from Colin that it was advertised for the period of time, only 20 days ago. He has not notified me okay. that it was advertised yet. Usually they send me a copy there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would say it, whether we wait until Thursday night or not, let's follow up with Oswald South and see if they did advertise it yet. If they didn't, I would say tell them to, to run with it after the, the change that we just talked about now. Um, that way it's, it's off and, and kind of baking, so to speak. Um, that way, obviously not for Thursday night, we won't be able to do anything, but uh, the following month we would be able to uh, adopt that and then approve the resolution. You just come up with these funny little expressions. Yeah. <laughs> just it. I yeah. like it. <laughs> okay, so the uh, the next thing is the LSA Category 4 Program Grants. Um, Sue, I owe you that letter. I got to print that out. Sorry, I've been a busy week. Um, I have until Kim leaves. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, if we, if we print one out, oh, then I will, I will be happy to sign it. Um, so I did want to add some, I wanted to add some things to it. I just didn't get a chance. And honestly, the, the letter being there is, well, thanks, Kim. <laughs> Fill in the blanks, sir. It must have a date and a signature. No, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Chairman, if we could just go back to uh, sewer management program yes. there briefly. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So, when our engineers report we have down there advertised and adopt. SMP resolution. Obviously, you, you all are on top of that. I think we're good. Uh, upload revised SMP educational material and district map to the township website. We talked about that. Uh, notify parcel owners and pumper and haulers of the new ordinance and the new procedure. That is something that we covered in our proposal. 
I think, for the sewer management program. So once everything's adopted, we'll go ahead and generate some letters that we can send out to homeowners, start calling some pumpers just to let them know uh, of the new procedure. Uh, the fourth bullet item on our engineer's report under next steps talks about uh, terror tracker education and rollout. And this is really that Kimberly and I would like to make sure that you all get an eyeball on the terror tracker uh, webpage to see how we expect the pumper to enter the data. Um, Colin briefly went through it, but he didn't really go through the procedure of submitting a form. We'd like to share that with you guys. And we'd certainly like to share that with uh, um, the SEO as well. So they can see exactly what we're, we're asking folks to do. Um, and then the last item under next steps is the sewer management program public meeting. I think that would be very beneficial. First of all, it kind of gets you a check uh, under some of those requirements that DEP has for a sewer management program. They want to make sure that you're bolstering education. And I believe that it would probably be beneficial for like a January meeting for the district one and district two folks so that they could, you know, we'd give a presentation. A lot of it's based mm -hmm. on EPA guidelines with a couple of videos that we have, but we'd also be able to hand out some information. Just share with folks uh, how you should treat your own lot system. So do you have a breakdown of the district? Uh, okay, so then we'd be doing, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you had much like parcels changing, but ownership might have changed. Yeah, it's like the only thing that might have been. Yeah, parcel numbers never changed. Yeah, right, but I mean, like, I don't think we had anybody subdividing or anything like that. No. So. Yeah, so we'll have to get on the ask mail again. So. Uh, I think that would be the only way to reach people about a, a meeting. Effectively, so, yeah. Yeah, so we'd have to uh, direct it towards those individuals that, um, in those particular, like at least a month ahead about a, a meeting. Yeah. So I'm thinking out loud. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Well, I mean, we've got a little bit of time. If we're doing something in yeah. November, we can take a week or two, get our, our no, bearings about us. Well, well, correct me if I'm wrong. You're, you're talking about like for each of these different districts like to meet with them? Right, so our proposal basically said, we're glad to give a public presentation regarding operations of one lot systems to each of the three districts. Okay. The village obviously, I hope, hopefully we get it, the whole public sewer thing figured out before we get there. But it's kind of a, you know, a small community get together. People can ask questions back, back and forth. You know, we would share information like grease down the drain, uh, strict use of grinders. Don't do yeah, all your like that. Okay. Day. Yeah. It's just yeah. really good practical information. Yeah. yeah. So, no I mean, just for, for repetition's sake, when we do town hall, not doing like the whole show, but that might be a good thing to have a small segment of, you know, part of this is until whenever public sewer happens, is taking care of your system. Here's some things, and we're going to be setting up some some informational sessions with with the sewer management professionals. But um, here's some things that you know are good general practices. Do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. Um, as a, a small component, a module of that that town hall. Um, that way, if anybody's there, but then maybe doesn't go to one of the subsequent ones, they at least will maybe get it by osmosis. You're yeah, we've done these kind. in the past, uh, <laughs> and I can tell you that. Initially, people come in all upset, but then after we give them the educational part, they're like, oh, I never knew that. Oh, that makes sense. We shouldn't be doing that. And most people walk away happy. Yeah. What? We're showing them ways to extend the life of the system. Yeah. We're jumping to the town hall for a second. What I, what I want to do, and I want to try to put sort of a, a framework of agenda together, that way we can all flesh it out, is focus on kind of how we got to where we are. A, a real brief history of the Act 537 in Marion Township. Um, I, I know. No, no, I'm just being... I know. Yeah. Flush would have been funny. I wish I would have said that. Um, 
but build build that out a bit and real brief explanation of like the Act 537 went in place the state Berks County put one in and we've been piggybacking on that ever since up until whatever date it was hotly contested it came back went back in but ultimately because of the way things are it's been received by the DEP and it's been approved so the, this is the reality of things we are required to do the following otherwise the consequence is they could find us a minimum of three hundred dollars a day so just kind of that's a, yeah. build build, build yeah. the bottom of the pyramid and then start going up and saying you know the gravity sewer was estimated to be this we did the initial studies as part of this and it's astronomical the cost of actually doing that so we're, we're switching gears to a low pressure system what does this mean for anybody in the affected area low pressure system works like this you have to have this in your house, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. Dovetail that into the fact that, like, we're obviously not going to go quietly into the night if we can't get grants. This is not something that we're going to put our names on the dotted line if it's going to bankrupt everybody that's in the area. Um, we obviously don't want to go down the avenue of having to, to start litigation, but if it means the difference between keeping everybody in the township, I'll say safe financially, then we have to do what we have to do. Otherwise, we're going to be going after grants to make this financially feasible thing and go through this in the time being, kind of segue into the, the on-lot management for everybody that has an on-lot system. This is the requirement for uh, pumping out and maintenance. This is what's changing from what we adopted a couple of years ago based on the changes that we had with the, the uh, SEOs. This is what it means for you as a homeowner. And then here's... Depending on where you are on this map, here's the years in which you have to do that. So I think we can have a very nice narrative on that. People are obviously still going to be upset about the whole sewer thing. I, I don't like it either, but the cold hard reality is we're, we're kind of administratively stuck uh, with having to do it because of it being a state requirement. So we just have to navigate the bad situation as best we can and make sure it's as minimally painful as ev for everyone involved. But I think we can we can have a nice, uh, again, I'll use the narrative statement, uh, story that goes from beginning to end and hopefully leaves people feeling a little better about it. They may not like it. They may not be happy about it, but they may leave the town hall going, okay, it sucks, but I get it. So. Well, I can tell you that special study really will be wrapping everything around grants. It will be made to <laughs> into the next item, but. Uh, when we went up to uh, Lebanon to the gym last week, Jim and Sue, and what's the last week? I mean, I, th I think that the, the voice was loud and clear. We need grants, plain and simple. Grants is the only way to get this accomplished. I uh, went back and did some back calculations, and the cost per user is enormous. There is no doubt about it. Uh, I think we got some good information and good intel from that meeting. And uh, Kimberly had discussions with others, and I'm going to ask her to stand up here because she knows much more about the grant situation than I do. But things, I th I, I feel pretty good about it. But I'll let Kim uh, go ahead through it. Thank you, Joe. Um, we've made some really great, I think, critical process uh, progress, I should say, in getting our voices heard. Um, all of your support is very well appreciated and people are aware now or gaining awareness of where Marion Township is and what it needs to do. Um, so I was able to speak a little bit more with Dan Bost, that's the district manager we met with at Senator Gebhardt's office to get some insights on his idea or interpretation of our grant application process and the plan I laid out. I've also spoken with multiple people at DCED, um, Berks County Director, Chester County Director, um, lots of people and insights into our plan for what type of funding. The Berks County Category 4 LSA grant that's currently due September 30th is, I think, our, our shining moment, perhaps, to get our story out and to have all of the local people truly understand. It is a local grant for a reason very important for trying to cultivate these design funds, the final funds that we need. We're going to be meeting with State Representative Barry Joswiak on Monday, which is another piece of the puzzle in getting support. 
And I feel very strongly that our push in these last days before September 30th is to get as much written support as we can and also to cultivate the voices in Berks County to be behind us. Yeah, I know I saw Kelly's email asking for people to bring in letters. Uh, currently, there might be one or two more in the mailbox. We currently have 27 letters and 56 signatures on the petition. Wow. Yeah, and then I had a conversation with Dan Klein, who I know you went to the, the HOA meeting, but Dan was- Oh, that was for something different. I know that was yeah, for something yeah. different, but I had a conversation yeah. with Dan about putting the ask out there because while it does not affect them right. for the sewer, right. it is something that affects the township and being residents of the township, yeah. you can say, we obviously don't have a huge budget. We need every bit of help we can get. We are very in favor of getting grants to help support this within the affected area. Um, I don't know if any of them came in through Stonecroft, but I did ask Dan. Okay, good. Wow. Um, wow. And so. we had Loretta Boucher going knocking door to door, knocking on doors, saying, please sign this letter to help us get grant money. At this point, we don't have a choice. We must pursue it. So, wow. And that's how we got 27 letters. Wow, Fantastic. that's nice. Yeah, and any more we can get and attach to our application is going to speak volumes. So, so if you send a couple with me, I'll make the rounds in Shady Cabin when it's not raining. Over the, yeah, I'll 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 make the rounds over the weekend when it's not raining. I'll have to do it on Monday morning, and we'll see if we can't get any more to add to that pile. I mean, some of these are just Marion Township residents, yeah. but the majority are. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll see if I can get, but there's at least three or four neighbors that I know of that would be willing to to, to put a letter in. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, neighbors supporting neighbors is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It really is. And we can get as many letters as possible. I ask ideally September 29th by 12 noon, just for my scanning and uploading it properly to the representatives. So there is a little bit of time, but earlier is certainly welcome. Um, and to continue speaking to that front, um, Peter, you and I had gone to that Berks County Commissioners meeting, I think February-ish, March. Yeah. And it's becoming increasingly important and apparent that we need to make contact with the commissioners. Okay. We really okay. need to speak with them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so when we were, Sue had a brief discussion with Pam Shook for the Department of um, Economic Development. And then uh, Joe Bold, as and myself, followed up, and we had another really productive conversation with Pam. Um, the request is the commissioners need to hear you. They need to get to know you. They need to put a face to your name. To that end, would it maybe be worthwhile to try to set up even a half an hour yes. with Commissioner Leinbach? And uh, I always forget the other gentleman's name. Rivera. Uh, Ramirez. Rivera. Yeah. Romero, thank you. It was something with her. Um, would it maybe be worthwhile to reach out and say, hey, we'd love to even if it's just one of the supervisors, so it doesn't categorize as a special meeting, love to sit down with you with Hydroterra and kind of give you the, the real quick overview of this and, and yes. make sure that you understand what situation we're facing. They need to receive a letter first. Okay. So it needs to be written and you can pull, we can pull from our letter of support here to give a brief synopsis of the project and why it's important to you. They need to know that it's one of those top priorities for the township. I'll I'll get you that letter. Okay. I know I've been it's it's most of the way written and there's there's two main bullet items and I may want to revise it a little bit, which was the uh, the Act 537 and the building. Those are the two things we were going to ask the county commissioners for their support in because those are honestly the two largest financial problems that we face. Other than the road, I'm going to ignore ignore the road elephant in the room for a moment. Um, but I'll I'll work on getting that completed uh, as as soon as physically possible and I'll send that to everybody that way if we have any nitpicks or reviews or revisions that we want to make uh, we can do that but then we can turn that over because I'd, I'd be happy to even take time off of work to go meet up with the county commissioners and have a, a discussion about the situation we're in and uh, if there's any any help at all that they'd be able to, to help us get and that is the hope um general funding or other things they they just need to know there is an issue to be aware of I would be thrilled if you wanted to talk through some of your remaining points. Mm -hmm. I always have time. I mean, you know, there's if you want to work on a weekend, that's no problem. You can call tomorrow and we can work through it. But I do think that that is an essential piece of the puzzle for the township. Um, you'll notice that on my engineer's report that I sent to Sue and briefly discussed, 
becoming really involved as a municipality is going to connect you with more people who have access to different programs or understand what's open. Melissa's doing amazing work, critical work with other grants and opportunities. And I think continuing really to talk together and get you in front of as many people as possible constructively is going to make a big difference in the long run. Yeah, if you hear of gatherings, meetings, et cetera, send them our way and apply so on that. Question, would it benefit if one or all or whatever would go to the Albright College CELD functions? I'm not quite sure how that yeah. connects with the county. Yes, because it, and Melissa can speak more to that. Yeah. All of those. Yes. The County Association of Township Officials, Cato, is the first thing that comes to my mind because, you know, as I'm speaking with the county, the DCED, again, they, they don't know who you are personally, individually, that you are a supervisor, that you're... Oh, I show up to functions and I still, they, I still don't get spoken to. Mm -hmm. I went to a grants workshop and the person sponsoring it never bothered to go around the room and speak to anyone. They only spoke to people that they wanted to speak to and left the room. And so it was a bit distressing. I know I, I believe that part of me being female is part of that. So, um, and despite it being 2023, there's still that level of discrimination. Um, the other part of things that I personal concern is my accents. If I start talking to people, I can't help the Brooklyn coming out. So, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, it, it, I've lived in Berks County for over 20 years. My children, you know, grew up here. My mom my was born here. But I, unfortunately, I always feel like I defer to Peter because, oh, I'm sorry. Well, you know, he's got that I was born here connection. So, you know, people don't want to hear me talk. They don't. Unless I'm giving we're them just, a prescription. We're going to, yeah. if I could party my French, we're going to get in their face a little bit. Yeah. We're just going to show them that we're here. My hand then. Absolutely. Okay. Full disclosure, yeah. I'm actually from northern New Jersey. When I moved here, people said I had an accent true story so i think it's just a matter of we care very deeply about the community we've become a part of it is our family now this is the place we want to see grow we want to see flourish we don't yeah. want to get bogged down in everything that might be happening right we're working towards this common goal yeah I, most of it i get discouraged i really do i get discouraged so you're going to go to the Berks County Convention? I don't, when is it? The 19th, I think. Of October. October. Because I don't remember who on the county level was there, but we'll no, find them. Okay. <laughs> yes, I can go that. Melissa's going to come with me. Yes, I am. What time is yeah. what time is the five to nine? Make those connections. Okay, and so yeah. you tell me what kind of dress I need to wear. Nothing. A business, business casual. Yeah, yeah. business casual. Yeah. yeah. I would gladly assist Irene. I would no love objection. it. Love yeah. Five p.m. and where is? Um, always. Oh, that's a nice you area. Just tell me where I'm going and I'll. Yeah, and Irene, we'll we'll talk about the main things we want to share sure. together. And I think it's such a great thing. I mean, Peter and I going together, we're able to speak directly with Commissioner Linebaugh. It's such a great opportunity. And sometimes you do have to just walk right in front of them yeah. and ask. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Elbow your way in and talk yeah. to people. Yep. <laughs> and um, okay. so we'll touch base as the grant goes in September 30th and then we'll discuss how we proceed forward but I think we're making great progress in terms of um, the Berks County Category 4 and yes that is thank you Joe um, we have revised the resolution we have for the Category the 4 we have for point number eight, review and adopt revised resolution. Yes, that's it. The other, yeah. the last one you just said. Yes, it should have received it yesterday, I believe. Yeah. Yes, so this is revising 
um, some key language based on my discussions with the support we have. If it passes your review, I'd, I'd like for that. If going back and looking at this prior 2022, realize that we can catch so many surveys, new survey in. So we went back and took a look at our numbers and we did get out. I think it's much more sweet spot. Thanks, Kimberly. Housekeeping question on that. Did you get anything from Fulton Bank about that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. yeah. I can check my emails. Yeah. Okay. Melissa forwarded because I wasn't like, about I'm to leave, I remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no. It wasn't like, we put the grant money somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Long story short, we're going to give them the grant award amount. I mean, it was about $105,650, I believe. That's what's going to be dispersed into that. Um, and so it will exist in that account until it gets drawn. Um, we, I don't know, Joe, if there's a timeline. The, the email in general is asking how long will this money be in the account before it's drawn completely. Here. Yeah, I believe it's 20, I I, 2026, but don't quote me on that. I would like for us to sit down and yes. uh, yeah. So if you can just tell us if we spawn. Yeah, sure. It's like every day, so. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just received that email. I'll absolutely sit down. Well, now we have. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. By the way, I'll touch on that later, but I have some homework for you with the, the email. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess. So you want to make a motion? Yeah, I was going to say I'll make a motion to. Today, right yeah, I'll make a motion to adopt the revised resolution for the LSA Category 4 Burks grant. Say the number. Uh, 2023-5. I was gonna say 2023-5. I was just, I don't yeah. remember seeing it there. Um, second. Irene, second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. You want to copy? Yeah. Pass it down. Can't afford it to break it. <laughs> we were at Stonebrook. Oh my God, the tech that they have at Stonebrook is so incredible. Watch it, I'll do the same thing. I know, I know. Mean, <laughs> you guys want handheld ones? Mm -hmm. No, no. No, they have, they have, uh, the camera tracks the person as they're talking. Or it does that. Oh, it's I didn't the, know. That. The exact same camera. Oh, okay. I have okay. that turned off right now, but it's the exact okay. same camera. So anyway, All right. we can we can later. <laughs> um Kim. Yes, and if I may, one final point that I would like to bring up today is regarding the statewide LSA. In the discussions that I've been having and in our meetings with public officials, because we are looking for the design of a low pressure sewer and it has the greatest impact on local residents. It is believed, and I also agree, 
that putting our efforts in this local statewide category for not the statewide, excuse me, the local Berks County category for grant mm -hmm. is the best use of our efforts and the township's efforts at this time. My recommendation is to not actually pursue the statewide grant at this time. We will use that for construction purposes when we have this design completed. Um, so if in summary, I believe our best efforts is for the September 30th deadline, the local category four for the support letters we're receiving, local officials, DCED's awareness, Berks County Commissioner's awareness. I think that's where at this time our efforts should be focused. Just as a question, if we have, there, there's not a prohibition about doing both at the same time, correct? Like you can, you could theoretically apply for both. You could theoretically apply for both, but actually I believe that would be harmful to your Berks County Category 4 application. It right. will be the same committee reviewing. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Something else. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, actually, the taser thing would be a good one. And yeah. that's why I want him to give us a, a wish list because they need so much support. Well, knowing yeah. knowing yeah. that we have one that we know for this year for those okay. kind of things, I know it's a little outside of the the wheelhouse of, of sewer stuff. But would you be able to help us prep the the tape? Okay, because I mean, if we're we don't want to double dip, like you said about the the things, mm -hmm. it's the same yeah. board of people. But if we're bringing something on behalf of us and Hope Hawken, one the police have this need. It's it's pretty expensive. Is this something that LSA statewide can help us do? I yeah. think that would that would certainly, yeah, okay, here's Marion Township again, but they're asking for something else. I, I, I see your point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. I think that's yeah. that's going to go a long way based on what you just said about not putting two similar or identical requests in, but still let's let's chase a uh, grant avenue if we can because we know we have that need there now. It's important. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Thank, um, you. Thank you. Anything else? Good? That is it for this morning for me. Anything else, Joe? Uh, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both for coming out on the Saturday. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. Okay. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you yeah yeah really appreciate yeah. the partnership sorry for your loss you? yeah. yeah yeah i didn't get to mention that in in turn but we're, we're really heartfelt sorry for your loss on that yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Take care. I will. I will see how far I get with a letter today, and how much my children let me let me do that. But it may be sometime next week that I get in contact with you, Kim. Okay. Um. Next. No yeah, later than. The end of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say we shoot to have our stuff no later than like Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'll try to get a few more from 
from my neighborhood. Um, we had a pretty good turnout from the sounds of it with Stonecrofts. Um, so, yeah. Yep. Little bits at a time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item, we already covered the scheduling of the town hall. We're going to look for November, dates for November. Uh, the rate for this would be 10 to $15 an hour. So we have a three hour long meeting. We're looking at 30 to $45. Nothing. Um, we need to submit the application as we mentioned before and be approved by the school board. So the sooner we get in the request with range dates, the better. Um, next item is the road occupancy permit ordinance amendment. A motion was made at last month's meeting to authorize attorney McFarland to prepare and advertise this. Um, Received notice of advertisement. Okay. So we'll follow up on Thursday night on that. Uh, next item is the proposed Airbnb ordinance. We made a motion at last month's meeting to authorize Attorney McFarland to prepare the short-term rental ordinance draft. Not seen it yet, see it. but hopefully we'll see that soon because I know we have at least one, possibly two Airbnbs in the community. Um, actually, the second one isn't listed. I actually looked for it. It's not on Airbnb yet. It has a uh, the one on uh, Shady Cabin Canal. Yes, it has been sold. Yeah, well, it, it has been Airbnb. sold. Airbnb. Yeah. It was on. Yeah, it was sold. No, it was on Airbnb. Oh, okay, because I looked for it yesterday, and it's not on there anymore. No, last week it was. Okay. Um, one on Main Street is still there, mm -hmm. but either way, we need, with this becoming more of a thing, we need to put property. Like we mentioned at last workshop and last meeting, personal opinion on this is I think it's okay, Airbnb, if you're doing that periodically, like you're going on vacation for two weeks, you want to rent your house, or you have a room that you want to rent out, or whatever. Doing it in a very minimal fashion is okay, but when it becomes something structural where it's an Airbnb 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, that puts it into a different thing. And I'd like to see us put controls in place so that we don't have essentially little mini unregulated hotels, places that can only, it's a, a short term rental up to a certain point. And then after that, you can't, you can't exceed a certain amount of Airbnb rentals throughout the course of the year. Otherwise, you're in in violation of the ordinance. Um, but I want to see what Kozlov Stout gives us. I'm sure we're not the first municipality to face this. I just want to make sure that we're yeah. we're being responsible about it. And it's a, a relatively new thing in the grand scheme of things that everybody's having to having to deal with. This will take forever since you've joined many Well no, that's no, no. no. this this the Airbnb isn't, is just us. It's just us. Like this isn't something that has to go through joint zoning. It's not a zoning concern. It's just a local ordinance. ordinance. Well, from what Colin said, the joint zoning doesn't cover it as a use. Yeah. But that's different than us doing an ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. So. So at some point, zoning should probably account for it. But we are or would be covered if we had that ordinance in place, even in the absence yeah. of zoning. So it's we like a, we actually in the grand scheme like of a rental. Yeah, in the grand scheme of governmental wheels, this one will actually spin pretty quick. So um, the next item is the robocalling. Um, I need to I need to finish looking at that. Um, the initial bit that I did, honestly, between the two, I think Civic Ready is it's cheaper, obviously, but it's the better solution, too. Um, but I, like I said, I just want to look through the, the contract language to make sure that there's not any weird things that are going to hit us later um we have the next item on the agenda which is the additional enforcement action against property owner of 1117 william pet boulevard uh, we made a motion at last month's meeting to ratify the zoning and code enforcement officials issuance of the notice of violation to the owner and occupant of the property motion was made at last month's meeting also to authorize the solicitor to institute an injunctive action against the owner uh, of the property if one of the, or both of the notices of violation were not appealed. Um, I actually had been out at the location and reviewed the, the progress at the, the, the property owner's request. Uh, Jim, you actually happened to drive by at that point and, and see us. Um, there has been substantial. But did you drive by in the past day or two? No. Okay. Well, Kraft was out. Kraft. I just sent an email to yeah. you this morning. Drive by. Kraft was did it, out. Did it get and... bad again? Getting there. Okay. Yeah, they took pictures, so look at that. And okay. We, we decide by Thursday night. Just drive no, by. Yeah, I'll, I'll drive by. I'll so drive by was... every single day. 
things get moved from one place to another, it looks clean for two, three days, and it goes back to things are accumulating on the sidewalks. Things are getting moved. Cars, cars, cars. It's like, I, I don't know. It's like the kids that you keep on telling them to clean up the room. I'll clean up my room. I'll clean up my room. And they move things around. It looks a little bit neater for a couple of days, but then it's all still there. Yeah. So. Plus, yeah. there's a fence that needs to be addressed. Yeah, the, the power. Craft actually yeah. ID'd that as fence right. the They didn't, get, have had a they didn't get a permit. permit. Yeah. Yep. Oh. What's, what's the situation with the truck that's sitting next door? We are not quite sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's the main truck. I think that's. Yeah. 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 But you know, even if it's the property owners, if it's on the other property, it's technically a separate notice violation mm -hmm. for the other property. Unless they have permission to do. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if it's registered and insured, then it's then it's, it's technically okay, yeah. no matter how banky it is. Yeah. Is there a number of vehicles that you can park in your front? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to remember, I can't see because there is actually a limit to that for it's considered a junkyard. If, if there's just, the, it's yeah. just um, yeah, it, it, if you've never lived here, and I can say, Melissa knew what the property was the first time she drove the car. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, it, you, no, no introduction is needed. Yeah. Or, what, okay. Wasn't he supposed to fence He did. He, he did. did. Oh, I don't know. It's nice. They're always the up. They're That's open. probably why. Most of the time they're open. They're open. I mean, that's right, but they did. He did actually do that. Yeah. The reason that I kind of started that that line of discussion the way that I did is, if he is actually compliant, if he is finally making a good faith effort and it's staying that way, staying that way being the operative thing, I'm kind of of the mind that we have Colin prepare the injunction and just keep it there, ready to just ready to drop. Okay, I'll drive by. Yeah. But. On the counterpoint, if we have a flurry of activity and then it immediately backslides, then we have no choice but to file the injunction. Yeah, it's already been Okay. Yeah. So I would say we stay on the current track. Um, if Kraft has not given him a letter already saying, like, we've reviewed this, you still need to address the following, excuse me, following things, and we will be monitoring on a weekly basis. But that wasn't the option. The option was, was appeal. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what I'm, yeah. hold on. So, so yeah. what I'm saying is we obviously still have the notice violation. We still have the injunctive action, but it's not going to police itself. You just given a timing to clean everything up September 24th, I believe. Yeah, uh, this is the, the 13th. Okay. 13th. Whatever the date was. Yeah. That was a final notice of violation. Okay. It's just like, I'm tired of I'm just saying the fact. Yeah. What, what, what I mean, the reason I was yeah. saying that is I don't want us to, to solely do the injunction. I still want Kraft to do whatever they're doing, following up. I, I think they are exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's gotten to go back to 20 years of trying to get the truth. I picked up on the book today, but I remember I put the years in the years. And it's how many times do you have to hold someone's hand? Until they, they do the thing that you need them to do. I mean, yeah. I believe that ruling came from the Yeah. 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 Yes. Well, I, I know. I know. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't want us to switch gears entirely. I still want us to do the two sides of all of us describing as the, the legal options, the, um, the district justice thing and the injunctive action to the Court of Common Pleas. We need to. We need to do this on on both fronts. Still, we can't just say like, okay, well, this one's done. They gave him the final notice, and like, whatever they're gonna do is is done. I want to make sure that right. that's still yes. The so right. recommendation was the yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So just have I would say just have Colin go ahead and do it. Okay. I mean, and I think well, Kraft, I mean, and, and that's what right. and that's, that's what Kraft uh, recommended too. That's. Colin can update us after Thursday night meeting. Yeah. Right now, the way it stands, unless we take any action to change it, that's exactly what we're doing. In the conjunction mm -hmm. with the Bible. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, next item is the Stonecroft Village deed of hope for the open space on lot 215. We're still waiting to hear back from Landmark. Um, there's no updates there. Right. Um, mm -hmm. We have. John here this morning. Do you want to come up and give us the emergency management coordinator report? 
um, as much as you as much as you need, but we appreciate brevity. As much as you need, but ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh first can we can I is there a way to put something up on the screen? Yeah. And yeah. Then, it's on the flash drive, right? John, to give you a minute. Just take the microphone take, with you. Well, you probably don't need it, but ah. this is this you just start talking. You like to talk? No, I don't. <laughs> okay, there you go. Oh crap! I mean, sorry. Yeah. Do you want me to change the view on that so that it's like files? Go, yeah, go to the little yeah. bit of extra large. Please. Yeah. This, I want to give you guys a little heads up here. We are going to the. Uh, there you go. Um. There's one I'm looking for that's not on, but it was this morning when I loaded it. Um, well, we're going to go back. There's several throughout here. Just the, the tiles are fine. I'll find it. Um, okay, reverse. So, the drone that seems to be such a hot topic in the township. And well, speak, speaking okay. of that, if I if I can for a second, I was out working on something on my house uh, several times last week, and a drone, and for the record, not our drone, uh, flew over my house several times. It was a much smaller unit, uh, but it, it flew low, probably maybe 40, 50 feet in the air over pretty much every house in the neighborhood. So I'm not sure whose that is, but again, for the record, it's not ours. <laughs> um, that's a car and a corn. So in a nutshell, the drone that we have, we've been busy. Um, I have been requested by police departments to assist on searches. I don't know how much detail. I was hoping Brian was still going to be here because this is one he called me out for. A armed felon and a chase, and they called me up to help search for it, which it was nighttime. So for me, I'm very limited on uh, night operations. So I actually called Western Burke's Fire Department. They brought their big thermal imaging drone up that when chuckling that their, their drone's like 40 grand compared to our little one, but daytime, I'm fine. But I want to, want to see, and I'm going to narrow this down for maybe we're trying to shoot for like five to seven minutes for Thursday night as just an example of some of the things we've been doing for the sake of, and it was after the fact when I was standing next to one of the fire trucks we had there from Western Burks, and I have officers on either side of me with their AR 15s, not knowing it was an armed felon. That then I realized it was a felon. <clears throat> but our capability, what we've been called out for, and if you see any flashing, that's because I have all my anti-collision uh, uh, strobes on it. But the so we can see into the vehicle for officer safety, whatnot. Um, so the safety side, I mean, this to me, this is another example that things more than paid for itself. Um, and just flying back towards the the landing site, you see where the police cars are. All, all our vehicles, my truck other fire truck were all blacked out on the other side um so let's fetch what do i do to close this one to get to another so uh, I'll, close the, your whole thing. Here, I'll just i'll do it okay thank you um 
there's been several classes I've been going to. Um, you, uh, you had a right click there for a second. Okay. Yeah. It's like two fucking all over the place. This is their Stargate stuff here. <laughs> um, so I've been going out also where what we're I doing. It looks like you have Colbert. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yep. yep. Um, in that the I've spoken to several other EMCs, floodplain managers, stuff all over multi-county area. And Butch, you're going to have more work to do. Um, just we'll get more hours. Um, okay. We got we're, what we're supposed to be doing, any and all culverts on the uh, checking of them pre and post. Like I went out and did all these um, well, within the last couple of days. But then after the storms, we're supposed to be going out and documenting, checking, because then if there is a major incident that we've documented, that we have inspected, we have done the upkeep on them, and here's the damage before, or the lack of damage before, and now the damage after. So I'm going to be putting all these onto uh, thumb drives and stuff, which I'll get to sue. Yeah. Um, so we have all the documentation we could possibly need and use. This one video here. Um, Where we start. Yeah, let's think about it. And while I'm waiting for that to load, I am also in a drone pilot class right now. It'll be for my part 107, which hopefully I'll be taking the test in November. Um, and then I'll actually have a commercial pilot's license for this. Would you be able to add oh, give all the information about the whole drone? That's issue? yeah, that's what I'm gonna work on. Yeah. Um, so that we can clarify it for the residents of the community. Uh, not every drone that flies in this area is your drone. Yeah. Other people that have yep. drones. And again, I'm, I'll have that written up that every flight that I have is logged. There's a map on GPS of the flight path that I've done. Everything. Um, it's not like that one. All right. Let me, uh, just, just for, let me try this. Yeah, yeah, let me try this one. And I have there's in these some of these pictures I, I caught photo and video of the elusive soft box, which that was two weeks ago. Oh yeah, there everywhere we're going. <laughs> there was <much>. there's what <laughs> now I know when I went out with Butch uh, months ago. Yeah, me um the what was the one that was down the one lane had the steel plate? Mario North. Um, wow, that looks great now. Um, oh, that, that's that's absolutely gorgeous now. That's I'm gonna try popping nice it. We talk about like the one is like there's one that's above grade and there's one below grade. I didn't get that. We ended up talking about deer anyway. So. Deer, deer. Oh. So John, I'll have to take a look at this. The um, file is saying that it's zero seconds long, which is why it's not playing. Okay, let's uh, yeah, try let me, the try one after let me, that. Let me try another. because some of the videos because when I. I take like a one or two second video to use as a photo I got because you. I can't I can't pull photos up off my phone yeah. on the control. I can only pull or pull up the videos. Yeah, that, right. that's probably Sorry. no. It's okay. That's probably what it is. It's it's trying to open a video that's a thumbnail and it's freaking out. Um, well, if anyone wants to see, come to our house. Yeah, <laughs> or we could put it on on the computer. So. Yeah, we, I just got to figure out which ones, which ones are which. If you pull that up again. Yeah, I'll share the screen. I'm I'm just arbitrarily picking some, and it's still. It um so if you could give us a call later so that see what we could do to get this so that it can't be viewed by the public. I mean, we can put them up on you can put them up on YouTube. Yeah, but put the public could do it during a meeting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we can just do a screen share, no problem. Yeah, that's what you okay. yeah. so, Bring your bring your laptop up there too. Do you advise I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, what's that? 
Were you advised about our meeting with Gephardt telling us that we couldn't fly it over your head? Um, yeah, he's whoever that individual does not know any of the laws by the sound of it. Um, That's because I can do. not that I do, but you can legally fly anyone can legally fly. I can go six inches over anybody's home. Not that I would, not that we have. There's no reason to. We're not doing that. But that's FAA controlled airspace. And that's where I was kind of hoping somebody was going to be here because anybody that threatens to shoot down a drone, that is a federal violation, fine and prison time, even for that threat. Um, but uh, there's no controlled airspace. We're not restricted. Nothing like out of the way. What's um, some? All right. There's at least the one up here, the second. Yeah. So let's see if we can get that one to go. This is the back side of uh, Shark Bridge. It comes up. I said, if anyone wants anything, I'm in a class on Thursday, but I'll work on this, but I'll download these to my laptop and bring the laptop. Yeah, I can get you connected. Okay. Let me see if this works. I'm going to try to edit. See what it says is there. I tried that thing. That popped up and it wouldn't, wouldn't do anything. I don't know. Talk right. about the bridge. That's, yeah, okay. that's the video. Okay. Stop sharing for a second so I can slide in here. The last bridge I did go to, Sharp, um, and I met a very nice gentleman that lived right next to my night. Calvin? Yeah. yeah. Had great conversation with him because he was very curious as to what I, I was, he was weed whacking. I could see he's weed whacking down the bridge. Like, there's nothing weed whacking want to come over and see which is great and we had a real good conversation and i showed him on my screen the damage on the, the bottom side of that bridge down at the uh the, the bridge supports and that that bridge is responsibility of the county okay good um because that's what, what irene suggested is who do i contact about that see your county okay because some interesting fact being it's an eight ton rated bridge and um what's that is that it yes yes yep yeah, i'm gonna go ahead and play that okay and it's an eight ton six thousand sixteen thousand pound rated bridge and while i was there there was triaxles uh going across at seventy three thousand two hundred eighty pounds that they were loaded up sure. yes sure. and there's going to be a failure at some point um but again, we're using this drone that if we have somebody in the creek, other than doing that pre-planning and what, if there's a call for somebody in the water, being able to get out over that dam, um, which he had some really neat history to tell me about too. What's that? Well, that's, um, it was built in 1903, not this section, the, the bridge I was standing in. Rebuilt in 1956. So in 53 years later, after it was built, they, um, did a little work on it. The year is now 2023. It's now 67 years since its last repair. Um, I just hope you can hope you can show it here. The it's falling apart. It's still a single lane. Um, the, so you want one of these? Yeah. Try this. One. That should be so a skill. Like the, so on the. Yeah. And I would say they said he said that the, the dam on the east side of that was built in the 40s for the sawmill that was there. Mm -hmm. That little building, he, he described how the building went way back. I'm like, do you own all of that over there? He goes, yeah, we actually own all of that there. And I'm like, but not this bridge. And you could see like for us, for um, management on this, just the debris and stuff down around it. You know, this is not bad. After storms, when they have to bring excavators in to pull the trees and stuff out, this is just another thing that we can go out and inspect. If we have a bunch of trees up against it, we just got to notify county or state, whoever is going to come out and clean that up. Um, because that can obviously cause major flooding up and around it. But you can see there, this, this needs some work. 
And again, I'm glad I was doing this because it's not our responsibility, but our responsibility to at least notify county or state. Um, it makes it easier because the manpower, he's not having to fall down, take school photos. Yes, there's much less yeah. chance of me dying doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, post storm, what, raging waters and whatnot, which will bring up something later because I messed up. Just pulled it up. Um, and like I said, I will work on this. I'll try to shorten this. I'll have our little mini IT person in house try to help me with it. But um, this this is another reason we have the drone for checking stuff like this. That, to say the least, much less manpower is needed. And it's much safer to uh, view things like this. I also did Canal Road, and I, I was hoping to actually asked while they were still here when if. When the sewer gets done on canal, the culvert by the log cabin, is that going to be, because I wish I could show you those videos and pictures of that here. Um, About again, it's bad, because I was able to get down to. Do you have it in here? Yes, if you can get out of that. Um, replacement of that is not part of the sewer. No. Well, no. If, uh, yes, that's I think that's a still picture yeah. of it, but you can check it. Or that one. Yep. Yeah, replacing that isn't part of the sewer project. Sue's right, but I know that's I time that it. needs yeah. some some love, just like the the one up by yeah. Mervin's house. So if you want to talk about replacing culverts, which has like two or three more, yeah, yeah. yeah. In town. I know when we went around there, there are several. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is again by documenting what it looks like now, which I don't know if it helped us or hurt us. But if that gets washed out, and because that is such a small pipe under there once that starts uh, overflowing because back on our property we've lost about five feet of our property because yeah. of how that comes down it's just basically washed all that out That's, i can i can speak to that personally i've lost probably about five feet of bank yep. in the past 10 years that i've lived there um that's what was done south, downstream of you from that, that farm all at, that at roy's house um bccd came in and did a stream bank reclamation i had reached out to um Jason Rickards, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was not Dean, it was Jason, um, about that. And I, I got to call him again because I was like, you really should strongly consider doing that for the rest of the length. Uh, but I was like, I'll be happy to give you access to my property, and I'm sure other mm -hmm. people would too. Come in and do the same thing because they rebuilt about five feet, six feet of that bank and put in timbers and trees. Because and, like, for ours, the old fence, the old barbed wire fence mm -hmm. is suspended out where it used to be yeah for about 75 feet about five to six feet out that's what we've lost yeah and i know i remember when we first moved that fence post was only about a foot out yeah. over the edge and just in five years you know our hundred year floodplain that's flooded five times um in five years four years so again i know with the upkeep which the guys are doing everything they can but this is uh, this is definitely one of the, uh, and I think it's tough to say because it's not a high priority road, but still. But this is one where we always have the issues where the uh, residents on that road feel like they like to drive through the foot deep water. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, again, I can personally attest to the fact that when it floods and it overtops that road, it's it's scary. It's yeah, it's and it's not something you should be driving right. over because and we still so there's a good shot of the we, uh, yeah. We still need to get the whole the, the um, gates. Gates at the ends of other ends of canal. Um, and there's the other videos of like the new culverts that have just been put in, where I was able to get in. I can I can't actually fly under it. I mean, there's no need because it's all brand new. But as far as me getting the getting the pictures and videos, the area around it, um, look how the right get built up or the group grown up on the one side. You can't even see any of the concrete now with all the the uh, vegetation. But um, all right, so. And when you, you were talking about, there's a location. Yep. I'm waiting. There's the. <laughs> Back of hot dogs hides the. Uh, Is there any other thing that's on here, John? Like, no, nah, not, not with this. I'll, uh, 
But um, and then you were talking. There's a house B and B or something like that. Uh, Airbnb. Airbnb. Um, depending on where that's at, because there's the flood zone and the special flood hazard zone. You can't do anything to those homes. Oh, they're just renting it out. They're just renting it out. But if they're doing any, well, if they're renting it out, there's between fire system. What and they're, they're, you know, they have to be brought up to a code. No. Not if you use not with Airbnbs, it's yeah. different. If they do, if they replace a single piece of drywall, it's the house is either have, it's considered a retreat. Is team actually buys the house to get rid of it, but it's this is all, all the stuff that I was learning about. The that's high class. enough that it's not in the flood. All right, because wow. Um. All right. So that was as far as the drone and everything we've been doing with that. The some of the training we. Karina and I had a little visit to Stone Crawford today. And I just want to take this and pass. This extension. Um, that class, When Disaster Strikes Prepare, Act, Survive, it is a free class. Department of Homeland Security and FEMA pay for it. They fly the instructors, do everything up to a day and a half long class. When I tried to be brief in presenting that, Kept like you okay, done. Not very funny. No, I was Yeah, you were. Um, Barely interested. They every single hand up went up in that room that they they would love to to participate. In. And this is now. this class. It's not for first responders, firemen, stuff like that. This is for everybody else that doesn't go out on that. That if you have an incident, help your neighbor. Um, a uh, how to breach an interior wall to get out. You know, just. To say the least, um, there's been a lot of great feedback, and no one has brought that class to PA yet. So it's free for us. I want to try to do several of them. Again, try, try to be a little more proactive with uh, our uh, residents. Um, so they just have to get back to me after their board meeting on when. I'll look in the, the earliest I can get one scheduled, like June of next year, because that's how they're booked up across the country. Um, and then uh, go from there. There is... I guess we're going to, at some point when we talk about the budget for next year, the training program again that was thirteen hundred for uh, the fire department. But again, as I wrote that up as Marion Township, it's the area departments around us that help us. Anybody's going to be able to use that because other than that initial cost, you know, Marion's always invited to it. Fire company. Have um, we had good usage of that this past year? It has been. They've done a couple classes. Um, they they did their minimums of the hazmat, but. We got into it late in the year, and I'd say probably half of that was technically paid for off that one class. Um, and that's where knowing next year, that's where when we meet, I want to have a training committee made up of one or two of their officers, myself, and then if someone as far as one of you here that, I mean, I could just report to you on it, but as far as what training we want to have, because um, on that training note back, The, I did it through Harrisburg Area Community College. I completed my basic uh, fire police. I have the advance coming up in February, but under Title 35, there's a lot of there's a lot of laws that aren't necessarily being followed. Um, where that's what we have to talk to the fire department about. Where you have to be trained, you have to be appointed, you then have to be sworn in by you to function as fire police in the state of Pennsylvania. And no one has done that. It's in the old, again, meeting minutes. If you go back, there's a couple of rounds of that being So where if you respond to an incident, like they respond to a crash now, yes, you can do traffic control for yourself while you're there. But if they're being dispatched as fire police, they, they're not a fire police unit. The liability on them and us allowing them or not allowing them at this point, that's to say the least, that's why I went and took this class, just so I could get a little more information. And the, the uh, coordinator out there is a big wig in the state when it comes to the fire police, to say the least, him being helpful. And another gentleman, he's, uh, there's a judge over in Moton, um, a district justice or something, is, is one of the, he wrote, actually wrote the book for the fire police. And he has been very helpful um, that 
once we have our meeting and figure out exactly what they what they're willing to do, what we expect, and stuff like that. Um, the is the LSA grant is that the casino grant? No, it is. All right, because that was the one we wanted to try to go for trailer and stuff. Because again, we have up the signs, homes. PA race course development and gaming. Area. Yep. So I want to say it's twenty five grand is what they usually do in that range. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the LSA different. category three and four. Are, are, yeah, most of them don't have limits. Right. So I think the state one had like a yeah. million dollars. Well, that's so, a nice trailer. Yeah, we don't need that nice of a trailer. Well, that doesn't mean you're going to get a million dollars for that, but. Bottom line is, let's get the information together. Because, like they said, you can put in. There's not a limit of like you can only. Is that put what you one. sent me the message about? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll work on that because I have quotes from several different uh, trailer manufacturers in the area. Um, because again, we have the cones assigned stuff like that, and I've actually put all that into my personal trailer for now because we got to get it out there. Because I just there's no room in my truck. And to try to load stuff, get here, load stuff up, unload my truck or what, or try to get Butch to come down. Get in, get in the truck, get stuff loaded. I mean, this is probably going to be half over with by that, but we got to be able to deploy a lot faster. Um, there's the, uh, it's called KEMA, the Keystone Emergency Management Conference is in three, four weeks. It's a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday out in Altoona, um, which I did register for. Otherwise, it's like tripled in price, but it was 50 bucks for that. But if I can get, uh, if nothing else, the hotels, the hotel night, two nights paid for. Um, which yeah, I don't know you, exactly what it yeah, is. It's, it's you didn't your, use much from your budget. It's in right. your budget. Um, Equipment-wise, I there's a few items I wanted to get that we, uh, after, again, taking that fire police class, um, which I did get a quote from. You just you just want to get a lot of stuff, but you you don't get this. Kind of funny. Window shop. I know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I appreciate you being prudent about things. You just... You, you've made so many suggestions, but you haven't spent the money. Yeah, there's a lot of things that if I could yeah. find a way to do it myself or just like those command yeah. boards that I did get permission from you guys to get like last year and or yeah. earlier this year. It's for yeah. when I went down to JDM and they had the a three hundred dollar dry erase board for twenty five bucks that had a scratch on it. I just bought it myself. So I turned that in the command and stuff, but this stuff I can't make no matter how yeah. creative I am. You still have uh thirty six $3,650. Because remember when we had the little bump on the road and Butch and I had to take a sign with the Sharpie and put bump. Yeah. Um, but there's two, it's be prepared to stop sign. Uh, two of those, two slow down signs that we can use. Because when we were out on a tree down call here, um, I think they actually went faster through that zone on us. And by more warning and with these signs, it's easier for the fire police. They can then cite. Because if they're not slowing down and to be prepared to stop, where if we have a firefighter or Butch or myself or whatever, and we're out there and they didn't slow down, be prepared to stop. Because there's also uh, two of the stop slow paddle signs that was suggested. And I was able to eliminate a couple things on here. Um, the A box of flares, which is ridiculous because I found them online, but it's like $200 to, to ship a box. In. Well, MS... Uh, MS2, MS3, what's the mainstream? Yeah. MSI. MSI, okay. Um, he can get them in for me. It's a little bit more than it would be online, but I'm not paying the $200 freight. And it just be a box of 15-minute road flares. Brian was nice enough to unofficially make me a little donation of the 30-minute flares of two boxes, so I have those. But again, on short incidents, I don't want to waste 30-minute flares when I get 15 minutes. Obviously, get twice the amount of flares out of a box. Um And you certainly want this stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's why it's, we have a lot of those signed stands. Um, just like yes. That's what all those. Okay. So eliminating the one box of flares, all the cones, because once we kind of okay. ramp up what we yeah. need to do, it's just, I'm not buying any more cones. I got no place to put them next. Yeah. And if we get the trailer, then yes, then we can get the cones, but that's all part of that whole grant package that I wanted to put together yeah. um, that we're not paying for it um, because how we have to do some of the, uh, the shoots and everything I learned in class um, and the 
fire police captain out of Womelsdorf has, to say the least, been very helpful also because we keep calling on them to do the fire police activity because they are certified, trained, appointed, and everything. Um, then I guess one big yeah. item. We're trying to work on our relationship with Marion, but our relationship goes both ways. You have to be willing to, to be part of it. So, KW generator, which, yeah, because I keep going out anytime I'm using any my lighting and stuff like that. I have no way to charge the batteries. I have the charges, I have everything, and I can't charge them out of my truck because it's too much of a draw and it keeps tripping the breaker in my truck. But that's also something again, we have something here. We lose power during the summer. I can hook that up so Sue has AC, computer, whatnot. I mean, it's only 22 kW. It's small, but it's enough for a couple portable chargers. Because when we were up on the incident helping the police, that was our biggest issue. Is even with the fire truck there, we couldn't charge batteries fast enough for the drone. Um, but between lighting, sump pumps, whatever we need to do, and uh, to and there's there's two pails of the fuel that are in that. And I'm willing to argue with anybody. Just use regular gas. No, that's what kills these pumps now. When when I deal with my customers, fire department wise, when they're using, use another term in front of the gas, um, they're killing their carburetors and it's, they're they're destroying their tools. Um, and then big enough generators. What's that? Big enough yeah, to to basically do, do like minimum two dual chargers. I can hook the computer up to it. Um, that was what was suggested. I mean, I mean. In the grant, I want to put in for like a 5KW that we can power the everything we would put in a trailer. This is big, and this is small enough. It's easy enough. I can put it, Josh, or uh, Josh, Butch, he can throw it in the front seat of the truck if he had to. Um, but that's the one, that's what, one of the big issues on the generators is what we call the clean sine wave so it doesn't destroy the electronics. And that's being a Honda, and again, Evelyn being close, and they did discount that for us. Um, and yeah, it, mental math between the two, you have that in the budget. Yeah. So if you come yeah. to us Thursday night and say, these are the things that I want to buy, this, 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 and this, it totals this amount. If, we, if you don't need it right now. We'll approve it because yeah. it's, again, it's already been budgeted for. You'll, you'll put that off Thursday then. And then the one one boss is the guy I was actually talking to last night on the phone um, down in Keystone out of Boyertown because he saw a couple of the pictures I had up if I'm doing anything around the creeks and stuff like that, like I've been doing, he goes, where's your vest? I said, I had my vest on. He goes, no, you didn't. PFD, which I know this I asked for once before you guys had approved. I just never got it. Because again, I just, I wasn't just trying to spend money. Um, but this one. But. Yeah, it comes in this size. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it comes in my size. Thank you. It comes that small. Again, not costing us a dime. This is going to be uh, pushing for all the local departments for it. It's a 50 student class. I've already contacted the Berkeley County Fire Training Center. We're hosting it there. It is officially under Marion Township Emergency Management, but it's free, no cost to us. That is the class that I went in June up to Kawanda for that was probably one of the best classes I have ever been to, and I'm really pushing it for our local departments right around here. Um, and I know there's going to be a little bit of pushback because the only way they do those classes, it's three days, and for this, it's Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I know some guys are not going to show up on Sundays, but I've actually talked to some of the firemen around here not just marion but they said they're willing to actually uh go against some rules and come to a training on a sunday after what i've talked to about that on that class so as far as that just so you know that is major tornadoes hurricanes wind events stuff like that that we lose like street signs and i have to bring in resources like okay i need you to go to this intersection there's no signs there it's down to how to use a compass and read the national grid system on the map. All that stuff's covered, mock searches. It, it, was, it was just phenomenal class. And I've talked to other guys off of uh, Pennsylvania Task Force One. It's a mandated class, and they actually like doing it. Um, so 
sure that it's easy. So this is what we got when we appointed them as emergency management coordinator. Oh, I just have a bunch of search. Yeah. I just have a slide. Um, and now for two months, I want to say at least, Berks has had my paperwork for my advanced certification that I have completed and got signed off on. Um, it's just trying to get one person at the county to sign it. For whatever reason, they don't have the time to sign a piece of paper. That's I'm a little frustrated with it. Wednesday, I'll be up at county for the monthly training, and that's when they said they will oh, have it for you next next month. It's just one signature, but it is my advanced certification. It is the highest certification at this point I can get as an EMC at the local level. But I am working on, uh, they say, the next step from there. But so I will, I have my basic, and now that's my advanced certification that I do now have. So actually, I now officially have a piece of paper that says I know what I'm <clears> supposed <throat> to be talking about. Um, anything else y'all can think of for me right now? We should double his pay next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could double the budget. That we need to get John a committee. Yeah. Well, although, you know, and, and he comes home from all these classes and he tells me that they have 17 people, they have 20 people, they have this million dollars, and it, it's him. And I think by reaching out to Stonecrop, it was more like, this is a class that's available, but we want you to know, we think of you as part of the community and we want you to start participating. I just, as a sidebar, I said to Peter, wouldn't it be great if we had a building, how many more community resource classes we'd be able to hold? And I think, I mean, for us, that's the goal. We want to have more community involvement. Yeah, it's not to be rude about it. We could actually use this building for yeah. an actual collapse. Yeah. 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 Well, 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 if the it's building's fun. gonna go, would you? Oh, this, if you, and so if anybody has seen here, uh, where the new Wawa is going in Robinsonia, all those homes there by Randler, mm -hmm. they are doing all kinds of fire training down there. Once whoever, when, if we are able to do this, and it would only be like a week or two that they would need for a building like this, once whatever wants to be salvaged is removed, yeah. I would definitely host and invite all the fire departments around here, you know, between truck company practice, to be able to go into an old schoolhouse like this, I mean, you're solid construction here for breaching, and we could smoke it up, and it's not real smoke; it's a movie yeah. smoke, basically. The, I mean, for searches, and even so, we're, at that point, we'd be knocking the building down. So. Yeah, yeah. And it, that usually happens like a week or two before the actual demolition of the building begins. That's why it's very short notice for us for the fire department. But as much notice we can try to plan, and whoever the demolition company is, say, okay, here, what dates are you looking? I need it, and that's where as you basically, as the owners, you tell the demolition company, because sometimes they don't want to get involved with that. And it's like, no, you're going to let the fire department train here. That, that's, that is a huge missed opportunity. Um, but to do all kinds of operations in this building, there's departments around here go nuts for this in a good way. So, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's not just drone training. It's, it's fostering a sense of community with everyone that's around us and trying to uh, improve relations Oh, and I guess the only other thing in the report was that we did have a firefighter injured. Well, all that work is not paper. Yeah. Paperwork is done. He never called me back. Oh, oh, really? I was told that he didn't go to the doctor. He didn't leave work. I, I told I the assistant chief. I did I don't not leave a message because his voicemail was shut off. I'll, have, have, I'll get a hold of Steve. I'll call him. This, I'll call the I assistant chief this afternoon. Because why do I need to stick a claim if you didn't go to the doctor and you didn't leave work? Yeah, it's just for us, it's just the documentation that there was yeah, an injury. Like if something happens in the, you know, because of that original injury. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we at least have that. But that, yes, he, there was a burn at a, at a training class. So it was one of those like, yep, it sucks that that happens. I'm glad they were training. They were at the, at the county training site at a, at a actual burn class with certified instructors. And listen, I've been burned several times over the years. Um, I've destroyed gear and I've got, you know, all kinds of stuff from my time. But it happens wasn't a deliberate act. I just was asking, did he have all his PPE on? So um, which they said yes. So accidents happen. I think it was more steam burns than anything, which happens once that's, you get sweated. That's, what it, that's what it had said in the yeah. email was steam, yeah. steam burn. It happens. I've had that in my arm. All right. We're done. We're okay. done. done talking. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Okay. So moving on to the next item, Creekview Dairy Operations. Uh, we have as mentioned last time, have received the as-built plans. Um, 
engineer has is issuing a review letter. BCC did an inspection on August 22nd. We're just waiting for the report. Their letter of credit balance is $40,222.88. Uh, the Colbert project, which is the next item on the agenda, is progressing nicely. Uh, Butch, they're finishing up the last one, correct? They're finishing up the two last ones uh, on Sheridan Road and and uh, Ari and North. That will yeah. be done. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, I, I always mix the two. <laughs> uh, and uh, that will be done on Monday. Uh, the guardrails will be put up on Tuesday. The signs are coming down, they tell me. It's paved, it's line shine. Yeah, yeah I gotta seated. I gotta say they look um, fantastic. They just have to drive it. Yeah. 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 So, Apparently everything went well on Marion Drive north south with the electric. Yeah. Yeah. Out, so, uh, we, yeah. Uh, the electric company mm -hmm. was odd and disconnected the wires. Well they they, they terminated the wires. Yeah. yeah. And uh and um, on Thursday, they energized the mobile. Okay, good. Now that's, uh, unfortunately, it was more money than we thought it was going to be, but uh, it's money well spent. And I think, right. yeah, and so we have culverts that are going to be in a state where we will be able to take care of them with minimal, uh, yeah. minimal operating cost every year and make sure that they stay nice. Yeah. Um, from what what Butch and Sue said to me, there are other culverts that Butch has now found <laughs> right, that right, are right. And, in and need of attention. We need to catalog them and, yes, and, and get and them prioritized. Right, because we've got the liquid fuels money, and so that but we one, can one, of, up. one of them is up on Windersville Road, and that's a, a well traveled road mm -hmm. for. Okay. For, and that, for honestly, you said there's a hole in the one at the Monday store. There's a hole. Me and Kevin sat us and uh, types the hole uh, three times as big as the hole was uh, at, at down on the church road on Monday at close to the Monday store and uh, and no. one up all the yeah. bridge is falling apart yeah. not the bridge uh, John was talking about but out the road further there's a bridge the sides are falling apart so not a bridge Where there... do you, which road on uh, at the north side of canal? No, no. Uh, uh, Sheridan Road out here, uh, close to close to the line out towards the butcher shop. Waller, Waller, no, 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 no. That's, that's Star, Star, Star Road. Star is the road right out here. Yeah, Star, this Star Road out here, on. Uh, out close to the butcher shop. Oh, that's like right before the line. Yeah, yeah right at, before yeah. Mill Creek. Yeah. Um, where, yeah, I think I know. I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Um, well, I guess we can pick up more homes. Well, the Chuck, yeah. Charlie pre approval. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. as, as, I don't want to overdo it with the LSA, but that would fall yeah. into that local service grant that we say, like, we mm -hmm. have for yeah. culverts that we, we did a bunch last year and it was really expensive. We have three more. Is this something that we can get funding from? Yeah. Um, and and uh, John Klein, the, 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 he was the boss of the crew that did these. Uh, he's going into business for himself till spring, and he's looking for work. It's, well, that, uh, those projects need to be bid. They, uh, yeah. they say that's yeah. big enough that it has to be bid. He'd certainly be able to bid in. Mm -hmm. on yeah. it. Um, but, but, uh, for for him to he was he was telling me for him to do it, we'd have to buy the culverts. He he just yeah, do it the has work. to be bid out. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be okay. bid out. I mean, that's usually with liquid fuels. That's not how. It works. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just telling you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do we have anything else we want to mention on the thing? Um, did you happen to talk to the the guide rail people about Hickory and? Bollinger and any of the other places we wanted to have them look at putting additional guide rail in, Butch? I thought Chuck was going to do that. Uh, okay, okay. Was, was yeah, that in Chuck's hands? Yeah, okay, yeah. so you're, you're good. So I'll, I'll mm -hmm. touch base mm -hmm. with Chuck. Um, also related to the, that, Chuck is working on the temporary construction easement permitted drainage easements for the culvert replacements. Um, so he says he has 
He has some of them, but he doesn't have all. He needs one. Okay. Well, it's good. He needs one. Good. Um, going into the next thing, I'm going to, based on the fact that there's possible litigation in play, I'm going to skip the Ballinger Road item. Um, guide rails, as we mentioned, uh, Engineer Hess is going to be looking at that and contacting PennDOT to make sure that we can use liquid fuels money for the guide rail improvements on Ballinger, Hickory, and William Pett Boulevard. Uh, the stormwater pipe extension along Marion Drive to Main Street. Engineer Hess is contacting the property owners and Charlie Parrish. Um, Chuck and I went out with Al and explained <laughs> the. Uh, well, I think by the end of it, Al yeah. understood because he was he was saying like, "Oh no, you just need to grade it. That's the way it used to be." Blah, blah, blah. And we, we kind of broke down like, if yeah. you stand here and look at it, look at it. You don't need an engineering degree or a surveyor's transit or anything like that. The road pitches down. There is a there's mm -hmm. a valley there that we're like, it, 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 and it's and it's always it's always been like that mm -hmm. as far as I know, and it's always going to be like that. Um, unless we re-raid the entire road. So if you have that situation, you have a pipe that's dead-ended under the streets, and you have essentially it's a, a basin where all those yards are, that it even goes down further, you have multiple acres worth of drainage funneling to a very fine point there. Mm -hmm. And to be blunt, water isn't going to drain uphill. So it is going to go, and it's going to rain, <laughs> it's going to run into people's yards, Alice included, and it's going to turn it into a lake. And I think by the end of that, he was... Kind of like yeah okay i get it now so that's a in the grand scheme of things relatively small project i believe the estimate for that was around twenty thousand to do the the first bit of it uh, the first bit of it being the main thing and the optional bit in the future was the additional pickups on the opposite side of the street for additional drainage if it's needed um i believe like i said i want to say it was like 20 or 25 and then there was another five or six thousand if we were going to extend the the pickups to both sides of the road um, I think grading pressure is twenty-two. I think it's twenty-two five. So I know it's right under, right under that from what Chuck had had said. Um, so we just have to get quotes to do that, and we just need Charlie's a pre-approval to be able to use the liquid fuels funds to do that. If that's something we can squeeze in this year, I say well, we do it, just like we talked about before. But if it runs into spring of next year, so be it. Um, we just have to make sure that we have it on the on the agenda to to do. Uh, would uh, uh, Ryan Algar said, uh, uh, "Can he, could he do it if he no. bid? If he bid, yeah. Um, no. No. So hold thing. on. Hold if he bid, it, yeah. If, if we get if we get multiple quotes, the the thing that Colin was cautioning us about was if Ryan was doing that on the capacity of the township, that there's certain stipulations that have to be met." with that yeah if ryan is coming in as ryan allgaier from allgaier enterprises or uh, i can't remember what ryan's company name yeah. 100 yeah. percent is um that's him coming in as the oh, outside okay. firm he's not doing anything in the capacity of the road crew all right we can check with colin i, for I sure, would double check but because if you're the, the second class you have to the, the issue yeah. comes from when, if yeah. we do it the well, other way around if colin yeah. does, or if ryan does something as the road crew that yeah. could conceivably be something that we are hiring right. an outside firm to do there is a possibility and there are certain very rigid stipulations around that to make sure it, it is not a conflict of interest right. um whereas like i said if we if we independently solicit quotes we get three quotes and he's one and he's one of the quotes and he's the lowest and we say yep we're giving it to all guyer enterprises okay. there is there is no road crew relationship there it is us the township saying your company right. is doing this work um but again Absolutely, he, feel free to check he, with Colin. He had Absolutely. told me he's interested in if he can, if he can do it. Could you let Ryan know that when he moves that that post, whatever we want to call it, that's in the middle of a road, it'd be nice if he'd move it back whenever he's done. It's always on the side of the road, and it looks like somebody ran it over. Yeah, I don't know that it was Ryan. I don't know that it was Ryan. Oh, okay. But it's it's defeating the purpose on the side of the road. It should be in the things of things on the main street here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The ballers, the ballers. The ballers. I don't mind him moving it. He can move it to make Most room for his trucks, but then park and move it back. Okay. Yeah, we want to make sure they don't get hit. And what I had said to Rick Hoot once that I was talking to was like, we may put it somewhere. 
and it may we may have to move it around a little bit mm. to make sure that it fits with how the dynamic of traffic is. The important thing is that they're they're there and they're visible. So uh, the one at the other end of town was moved on the curb one day too, and and uh, then I called Lee and Brubaker and said I I sort of blamed him for moving it. Where where is it? He didn't even know it was moved. Yeah, and he, I moved him a couple. I mean, I think just it's annoying that people do it, but it's unavoidable. So as we all collectively transit this area, if you see it, pull off to the side, stop, move it back, and we just have yeah. to keep doing yeah. that. The one at the, the other end of town, I moved it to the middle of the road. And yeah. Uh, Eventually, people will get the hint that they need to be there. So, Next on the agenda is the building demolition and proposed new building. Uh, there was a meeting back. August 10th with the Olson Design Group. We made a motion at last month's meeting to hire uh, the Olson Design Group for purposes of fleshing out the ideas around the new building. We have not heard back as of yet. So let's. I think he had surgery. Okay. Well, I mean, let's, let's drop him the line. Yeah. Just, hey, thinking of you. Um, <clears throat> and go from there. The Comcast franchise renewal, there's a draft agreement. We will need to authorize uh, Attorney McFarland to advertise a public hearing to adopt the franchise agreement renewal. Um, without going into too much of the details, it's advantageous that we did this because it's certainly going to be an increase in revenue from that. Um, but uh, let's all get ready to authorize that on Thursday night for so what Colin. What you in that agreement is he has 3% and currently we're getting 5%. Okay. You might want to check that out. Yeah, let's... I didn't read the whole thing. I just have to it. Yeah, yeah. The, the total amount is is higher, but the like, let's check the percentage. Well, that's 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 CMS. Um, uh, Gonna go look out flooding, John. It's gonna be pretty. Cool. Yeah, it's, I'm I'm scrolling through. That's why I asked if it was if that really turned out to be an advantage because yes, it's it went from five to three. Yeah. Like the max we yeah, every year we've, we've gotten a little more, a little more, a little more. I want to say when I first started, it was like 9,000, and it was 12,000, now we're getting 14,000. So. I'll have it ready for Thursday night, but there's, yeah. it's a very long document. It's very long. Um, I almost didn't scan it. I don't know if I would. No, nah, yeah. it's, it's better that way. Yeah, I'll, I'll look for it, but. Um, other than just checking that, because that's a good spot. Thank you, Sue. Uh, maybe we want to bring that up that we we counter with one to five. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know because we find that. Yeah. Or if it was error. Or yeah. Yeah. Or or like I said, it might have been a situation where they negotiated that more things will be included, but at a lower percentage. So, um, we'll figure out the final bits of it. But it, it looks like we're we're certainly going to be, be much better off as a result of this than historic. So we should mm -hmm. see an increase above even the stuff that we've seen increasing, yeah. which was pure usage. Um, yeah, my bull's on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then the way this works, it, I think you have to like give your blessing on it. Yeah. And then we have to hold a public hearing. Colin yeah. said that will be held like right before the next meeting. The meeting. Yeah. Thursday night meeting. And then we go into our regular board items. Yeah. It's like the, the stuff with like the joint zoning yeah. stuff yeah um okay so we'll talk to colin about that yeah. thursday night and potentially uh ratify the agreement depending on if we have any yeah, they are, they want to like so if you have to actually approve the agreement and then do it uh, I don't yeah you got to approve it and then schedule a public okay. hearing um so more on that uh western burke's zoning zone uh zoning ordinance section 403 uh, the September 21st meeting was canceled around this, and we're waiting to see what the rescheduled date is. Um, so and I did email her and ask her to add Airbnb to the next agenda. Thank you. Um, next is the 112 Forge Road Municipal Repository bid acknowledgement form. Um, this is one of the ones out in the, the trailer area, correct? Yes. Yeah, this is not the first time that this has come up. So this resident passed away, and I guess you know her taxes weren't paid yeah um 
what I'm getting from this email is that you have to either accept or reject this bid. It has my name on it. I don't want my name on it. Yeah. Um, I, Susan Stabby, super, supervisor of the Marion County, for Marion County. Well, no, no. No. But it, you have to accept or reject it and give a reason if you reject it. And then sign it. Yeah. He's paying. So somebody paying somebody the bought the property at Sheriff's. No, it's not bought yet. It's not, not bought well, I mean, yet. they, they made a bid. Five hundred dollars. So this is they call it an upset tax sale. Yeah, that's that's usually that's the sheriff's sale. It's oh, the no, upset tax. It's a little different. So there um, there's upset, judicial, and then free and clear. And in, then this goes. This went to the repository. Yeah, that and that should be the the sheriff's sale. Technically, is the upset tax sale. Hmm. So somebody um, put somebody put a bid in on it, and we have to bid amount of five hundred dollars. We have to accept it. I mean, I don't see any reason not to. Have to well, I mean, we don't. Yeah. We don't have. Yeah. I don't see any. And then if you read it, so apparently, you know, there's more than five hundred dollars. Oh. Yeah. So I guess they're giving you the option if you want all the taxes paid, then you reject it and say why. And they're not reading that. Right so now. It, well, yeah. So the way that I understand that this works is with the the upset and the judicial sale. Um, the taxes there. There's the we can have a requirement where the taxes have to be satisfied. We can either accept or deny that. Free and clear, on the other hand, is it is what it is. They they auction it, and that's end of story. Um, so the question is, do we want to get five hundred bucks, or do we want to potentially push it back out and say no, this doesn't satisfy the delinquent balance. Um, Mean, uh, you read it. Uh, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Is yeah. like we could yeah. push it back I mean, and yeah. say, yeah. hey, we want closer to the thousand, but that doesn't guarantee that somebody's actually it's going to do it. Right. right. And it may end up going to free and clear, and somebody may get right. it for five anyway. Right. So we just need to keep the word correct. Yeah. And it's the incorrect this, first. Then. Uh, well, yeah, we would just change it so that it's like. Um, need this no later than October I mean, so you need to decide this. Yeah. yeah. So how, how big I mean, is this? Piece? It's a tiny little it, parcel. It's, a, it's got a trailer on it. No, it's not a parcel. It's a little trailer park. It has eight or ten trailers in it. Was oh, it the whole trailer park? No, it's her trailer. Oh, okay. They don't own the land. Oh, they own the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah gotcha. it's a trailer okay. park. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is specifically. Again, this is has two parcels, but I think this is just where the trailer. So. Not trailer. So. Mobile homes and manufactured like modular homes work weird everywhere. It's Pennsylvania, titled. it's it's, it's titled, titled as, as a, not yeah, a it's, it's not considered real right. property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is this for the parcel or is this for no, the trailer? He doesn't own the land. Yeah. Okay, so it's just it's the trailer. This whole, okay. Looks like it's this whole section. Well, it's, but it is. It's 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 a but Jim. No, Jim, yeah, no, Jim, there's only eight trailer. or ten trailers yeah. on it. So time out for a second, Jim. This this isn't about the land. This is no, about the trailer. About trailer. This is about the actual what would be considered domicile on the land. I it's can tell you just all of those trailers thing. in there, because it's right up the street from me, yeah. are old. Yeah. Very old. Yeah. So, so she like even if it would be sold, yeah. she wouldn't get it. Yeah. So Jim, like I said, just to, to rehash that. Most places I know Pennsylvania for sure, um, trailers and some modular homes are actually essentially considered vehicles that you're you're given a title for it, and until you do certain things to relinquish that title and officially bring the, I'll say the equipment into the the real property, the two are considered separate. So you'd actually in in this case you would get two tax bills. You'd have a tax bill for the land and you would have a tax bill for the home. Home trailer that you have. The all the, the unpaid all taxes. they're buying is the trailer. Is yeah. the trailer. And technically, he could take that trailer and move it somewhere else. It's her trailer. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with some of the the the. Uh, we changed the name from the Susan Stobby yeah, to. Yeah. 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 I mean, so honestly, if, if we can put thing. like board of supervisors and then have me sign it, well, or if we have to like, put my name as the chairman, we got to I mean, do that. Just it's a thousand. They, they owe one thousand thirty-seven dollars and ninety-four cents. So we're basically we're getting we're getting a guaranteed half of it. I would just cross my name off and put Peter's name as chairman of the supervisor. I'm perfectly fine with that. 
they don't like it, then they don't like it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not super like it. No. I have no problem. I also am of the mind that we should take – there's no guarantee that we're going to get any of it. Exactly. So I would say let's let's accept this. Move on with life. You want to do this Thursday? Yeah, yeah, let's do it Thursday. But as long as we're not – like I want to make sure that we're kind of unanimous as a board here that nobody oh, has absolutely. strong feelings. No, no. The other way. No. Yes. You got to get up here, Dave. Yes. Thank you, Dave. Right. Say it, if you could. <laughs> Me. I do have one question about that trailer park. Yes. I'm not sure what the legal requirements are for adding or taking away trailers. Um, However, yeah, there was a trailer uh, torn away. Mm -hmm. There's been a new one put in its place, and it may be adequate. I don't know if there's I, any inspection I, I fees or I, permitting required for that. I think so this was the case where it, that it, was, it was an upset tax sale. Yeah. Somebody bought it. Yeah. Tore it down because it was pretty much shot anyway. Yeah. And now we just drove by recently, and there is another trailer. I think that's a zoning permit. Like I think it's no different than a shed, honestly. Um, the only because yeah, it's a trailer park. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a, I, I don't know. We'd have. Mix. I would say we'd have to ask Chuck, but I, I think the way that works is it's, um, it's a it's a simple zoning permit. It would be like if you had a shed and you're replacing the shed, even if it's the exact same size. You just you file it. Um, oh, I, I appreciate it. So double. Um, Bandex Russell and Ronnie and Sister Amy. Yeah. So it let's... was Harold's property, and he signed everything else. Yeah. It is it's just a lot. Basically, it is a tiny. It, it might be a half acre. A lot. The, the trailer park. Is it that big? Close together. Well, yeah, we can assessment. we can check the tax assessment, but I, either way, the size for this is kind of irrelevant because yeah. it's not it's not the land that's in question here. I'll look at the tax. Okay, um, so we'll do that Thursday night. Yeah. Keep that in there. Um, the advertisement for the road crew and the assistant secretary positions on Indeed. Um, I know some of that was uh, Melissa and you discussing what the best secretary ad would be. Um, have you guys made any strides there? Yeah. Okay. I have an ad done. I need to send it to you guys before I post it if you want to make suggestions. Perfect. And I'm working on it. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. If we have something for Thursday night, even if it's one out of two, I'd say let's get that and pull the trigger on it. Do you want to advertise for the other opening in March? Well, ideally, the we take the, the the one posting and just make that the non-assistant. It would just be mm -hmm. your congratulations. Mm -hmm. You're the secretary now. Um, uh, well, essentially, we wanna, we, we where we, do we want to change the name of that position? And... Well, my my thinking is we bring the person in as the assistant, and really hope they're good enough that when when Sue and just to 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 let the cat out of the bag, Sue is going to be retiring in March. Um, that that person becomes the full time person. Take the time. The, they become the new Sue. And then if. <laughs> yeah, if what did be Sue? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Uh, Changing the name. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's big shoes to fill. But um, <laughs> what we would do then is based on the workflow, work the land, if there's still a need there, then we repost the yes. assistant secretary so ad. We essentially yes. promote that. Book yes. And then re add. That's, that's at least my thinking. If we have a nice organic mm -hmm. transition where. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That we bring bring her in or bring them in. I shouldn't say her; it might be a gentleman. Bring that person in, get them trained up, get them to the point where they're comfortable being the assistant, and then go. Congratulations! You get the talent. No, you, you still have to say, yeah. you know, there's this. This is what, and 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 we have to consider possibly um, increasing the hours, a and benefits. We have to consider that because we're not going to get people. I mean, it's going to be, yeah. honestly, it's going to be difficult to attract people, uh, certain types of people based on it being part of it. And right. With it being, if we go the full time, right. the addition of benefits is incredibly, well, incredibly costly. Keep in mind, if you go to full time, then you have to offer insurance. Or and that's oh, yeah, that's right. what I mean. Like uh, right. the benefits package that goes on top of full right. time is All right. incredible. Right. right. But, but, I, mean, um, I mean, it's yeah, possible. It's, yeah, possible. it's, it's expensive. Yeah. Right. But, but there's, there's so much work here. Mm -hmm. yeah. All the time. Oh yeah. 
you know, mm-hmm. I haven't been good about I mean, Melissa is trying to write down stuff I do. And yesterday she said to me, like, you do so much and then you're interrupted. Then you have to like get your head back into what you were doing. And yeah. like, mm-hmm. I, I it is. When things I mean, are piled this high on your desk in multiple well, piles, you know, it, it, it tells me. You know, it, it tells me that you, is, you, you know, you're overworked. I mean, some days I don't get through the mail. You know, it's just I get keep getting interrupted. That's yeah. why I, I honestly think we should at least explore a full time person. And yes, it's going to cost us more and well, benefits and what have well, you. But honestly, my my stance on this is rather than the full time, there's there's a certain dynamic to doing one person more hours. I'd rather almost have more people, same amount of Part hours. Time. It's the difference between one person being able to do a task sequentially and ha- <coughs> having exactly. three people being able exactly. to do a task exactly. that you'd yeah. actually get, I think, more bang for your buck by hiring a third person going for a second person right. secretary because right. then one person could be doing the mail and, and that, the phone. And that's what I, like, my yeah. okay. practice was have somebody come in, an assistant come in here, have that person do minutes and agendas mm-hmm. right off the bat, yep. get into that that frees up that time for me that I can do other things. So, uh, so post-retirement, would you like to be a consultant? I'm not sure. Yes. <laughs> um, so like my thinking on, on this and, well, yeah, I mean, and that would be purely at your discretion. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so think about it this way. If we had just Butch doing a road project, something that would take him months to do by himself, uh, statement against Butch, mm-hmm. if you had two people, might shorten that to three weeks. Mm-hmm. If you have four people, mm-hmm. might shorten it to two weeks. Mm-hmm. If you have five people, might shorten it to a week. So mm-hmm. there's a there's a a, a, a marked uh, uh, what's that? What's the term for that? Um, it's it's a function of gain on that, or the more resources you put at it, the faster it goes. Some things right. will work that way, some things won't. This I think is one of those things that if you have somebody who is able to deal with the phones, the mail, the people walking in for permit things, the distractions. Yeah. One person can be focusing on minutes and filing. Mm-hmm. And like I said, if we, if we got to that point where we're, okay, we're still we're still overloaded, we got a third person in as a assistant again. We have two. I mean in there and I'm, I'm not saying this against you, Irene, yeah. but they're all up until kind of me, there were there were two people in the office. Yeah. Yes, the treasurer did the treasurer, but he also so was here to answer the phone stuff. or take care of permits or, you know, various other things where, yeah. you know, and I, I mean, I don't mean that against you. Yeah. Yeah. No, so because yeah, yeah, no, I'm not here. Yeah. I'm doing the treasurer stuff. I would say typically it's like five to 10 hours a week. And that's with me having a full time job mm-hmm. also. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so like big, big picture, what I would like to see us get to is where we have adequate staff, the right skills, the right people, the right quantity of people, where Irene comes in and does the just the tail end of the bookkeeping. She does yeah. the balancing, she does the reconcile. Oh, no. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hear me out. Yeah. This, and you have other people doing the process of, okay, we got a check-in, I've scanned it, I've done X, Y, and Z for it, the, the basic stuff. This is the, you don't have a, a master electrician pulling wire in your house, you have the guys pulling the wire that do that, and then the master electrician comes in and certifies it. Um, that's my thinking, and it's, I know you're, you're yeah, grimacing yeah, there. Yeah, no, because like, what's the point of that when it, it there's there's so many steps now, I have to show you, there's so many oh, no. steps with, me, I know, with, but... with, with, with how it's just evolved over time. There's, there's so many steps involved with that. It's not just a matter of accepting the check. You have to, you have to go to a certain portion of the program. Mm-hmm. You have to make sure it gets reported. You have to generate um, receipts. You have yeah. to, it's, it's, it's a paper uh, thing. Uh, yeah. 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 But what, yeah. what I'm saying is yeah. if you had somebody else doing that stuff and you could come in and go, yeah. okay, this following the process, this is missing. I know we need to go back. You need to go scan that. Or this was essentially you would be auditing. It, it, it would be so wouldn't save me yeah right right yeah my concern is we have two very qualified good people right. are we going to be able to find two or three very good qualified people. good and people that's, yeah. that's the that's you know, the at, right, a, right, at a part-time right. rate with no benefit it,
some of the people will have to be told. And right. We're going to have people come in and actually, they're going to screen them and train them. If I mean, they I'm say, going to say, right. here, type a letter. Like, type, um, and how can I say? Um, like, we need to send them. to type a letter to BCCB saying thank you for the report. Yeah. Like, make it a letter. Yep. Or like I said, listen to listen to, it, you listen know. to five minutes of the meeting and give us give them, give right. us minutes. Right. We well, we learned from people. our past experience. So, <laughs> I, but yeah. like talking to one of my neighbors, yeah. she's like nine thirty to two thirty is yeah. perfect for Just basically your moms good. that are at home mm -hmm. with their kids in school. She would be interested in the position, and I know she's a very capable person, but she has other restrictions that that would prevent her from from doing so. So she's like, oh, I mean, that sounds perfect for me, but she can't. So, um, I was like, oh, what's up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the sooner we get that ad yeah. out there, the yeah. sooner we can start screening candidates. But well, again, my. Because we don't want someone to sit here as a secretary and then you're like, all right. Well, we wanna... and they're like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I'm doing this thing. Let's put the ad part of the interview process. This is an assistant. Right. Our full time. Primary secretary is going to be retiring soon. The intent here would be level two if we hire you. I was successful for that. Right, right. We find more than one candidate that we really like. We find two people that work out really good. They, you know, get along well, and you guys have them in the office. Because the biggest thing is we need to have them in here to come in with you. 100%. There's such a volume of information. Think of something all the time. Yeah. Like, just to make sure I have everything. Mm -hmm. Upping, like, some of, like, the requirements. Type into the phone. Yeah, it was a computer, like yeah. computer. Yeah, no, you know, computer dies. Or... Yeah. 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 Right. And maybe if, if there are people that match up, you bring them in at the same time to do the training and then they can start with a different time. Or work. I mean, honestly, right. we'd have to yeah. check the budget, but depending on where we are in the year, we may be able to say, hey, we're going to bring you both in for a couple right. of weeks. Yep. And then when Sue bows out in March, one of them will be, one I of you mean, will be the, the primary and one of you will be the assistant. So the yeah. biggest thing, like when I started here, I was thrown right into a meeting, yeah. taking notes. And I had no idea how to take notes in a minute, yeah. a minute, how to take notes for minutes for a meeting. But, you know, I mean, at some point, you just got to throw them in. Too. Yeah, well, you, right. we want to we make sure people at least have water wings on before we put them in. Right. So. But a lot of the things have changed. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, for me, essentially, yeah. if you know how to be a secretary and be organized, you yeah. can do this job. You gotta be. You gotta have the right mindset right. and the right personality. You and I had a conversation on the phone the other day. That it's there are people that can do the job, and then there are people that can do the job. Very, very, very different things. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Okay, so we'll yeah. we'll look forward to reading the draft uh, yeah. advertisement for one of both positions on Thursday night. I, I think that like should be email it to you guys. Thank Even you. better. Thank, Thank you. you. Also, also, we also need some of the mindset to say, hey, we want to move forward with Marion Township. We're trying to mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. all these improvements, mm -hmm. and this is this is what we're we're looking for in someone. We know it's going to be a very rough road, but hopefully, we're going to get there. And we need you to help us. You know, making them part of the group. And I think for me, I remember coming into new jobs. It was always like, oh, I'm always the outside person, and um, it, it's tough. We, we immediately loved and want to adopt Melissa. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was like two weeks. Well, it's just like yeah. a younger, fresher. Yeah. 
perspective. But yeah, right. But she, yeah. but we've gained so much mm -hmm. by having her insight into so many things. I was like, oh, that, you know, it just, but again, it's the age group that's sitting at the table. We were all different generations. And my God, what a difference it's made. It really has. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to do. We'll have to do something. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a destination all right, retirement I mean. degree. Uh, uh, so we're closing in on the end of the agenda. We have yeah. the uh, 2023 Volunteer Fire Relief Association funds. This was $14,018, which was direct deposited by the PA Auditor General on September 21st. Acts 205, as always, requires us to give these funds to the Marion Fire Company Relief Association within 60 days and complete Form 76B, or 70, 706B, excuse me. Um, so as usual, we'll do that. And yeah. that's- Can we make arrangements to give them that check personally? No, 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 it has to be. So that, that, that way we so can have a meeting. Can we, can we get a novelty like Publishers Clearinghouse check? And the balloons and yeah, the this hey, giant hey. thing. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, We've been trying to get a meeting. That's this is a great opportunity. Hey, we have a check for fourteen thousand dollars. Can we have a meeting? So now they get nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be a member. Well, we'll join the fire company. How about we do that? Let's we'll, we'll join. I don't even know how you Let's join. join. It's not open to the public. No. I say we all join. Yeah. Okay, find join. out how. I'm, I'm, I'm game, yeah. but I have no idea how you do it. That we all join the fire department? Oh, they don't allow us? Oh, yeah. I think they allow us not open up a lot of grants. I think you much. have to be approved to join. And I don't know how you even, how the process even works because it's not published yet. Do they use a black ball system or something? Yeah, I think this is a lot of opportunities. So, what do you just call them? Tell me, you know, we have a check for fourteen thousand dollars. We'd love to meet with you again. See what they say. Just to, I'll, I'll get down to the yeah. sexism thing on a slightly positive note. I'm sure they would be more, they'd be more attractive for grants if they said we have women in the fire company. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that's, that's very good. much an exception very good. Good. that you could say like, you know, we have a, a diverse, well-rounded uh, mm -hmm. group of people. Um, that's uh, something we could discuss when we get in there actually had a meeting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll have been to follow avoiding this for, for years. years. They don't yeah. give us their budget. They so, don't give us any kind of reports. And certainly, isn't there some law that says they need well, they're, to? They're all, it's, not, it's not even important. It's, it's already required. It's second class council, code, but I think it's only. Um, well, they what the mean? We have a check for $14,000 and yeah. they just but need their yeah, reports. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, we're not going to keep it. It would be nice if we get a report and we'll bring it and we can exchange those things at the same time. So, so, so I can tell you, John was. I can about tell you that if I call him, yeah. you'll hear it. Whether or not we want to go that route is, is one thing. If we want to, John, come up to the podium because we know more about the minimum training, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we want to have good relations. They see us as a very aggressive thing. They don't like him. Are you a member? No. Ooh. No. Yeah. 
They were yeah. I run with Wommelsdorf and Newman Stout. And that's where I won't run with them unless well but technically it's you because should be I working, you should be working EMC, together. And yeah. well that's the thing as far as how how can you how do you be a member of that department if you're supposed to be doing some type of oversight and that's why I won't run with them. Not that to say the least, not that I was asked, but I will say one officer, Steve Weaver, has been very receptive and whatnot. We've been getting along very well. And we were going back and forth on dates um, last month about trying to, to meet, but it was this, it was like a day or two before. And it's like, like I, my schedule, I'm scheduling out to the end of November into December right now for my work. I have an appointment and, this evening. Yeah, February. October is very, very, yeah. very bad. Like I'm a week in Wisconsin or Virginia. It's four days in New York. It's, I'm all over the place training. But um, yeah, under Title 35 and workers, there, there's I ha, I pro, the folder is probably about that thick I have right now. And it's one of these I don't want to scare them per se. It's but there's a lot of things. There should be a lot of a lot of two way communication, which is not happening because of a prior regime. This um, is and this is, this is the problem the fire service in the state of Pennsylvania, because yeah. number one, I said, these, the guys are great. They don't scratch on calls. They're scratching on calls, not, not getting your rigs out. They make every single call. It's my issue is in some things of the, the quality and training of those responding. Mm -hmm. And then I still reference back the pictures. That's that would be a good one for the drone. Um, that I have, I have the drone for the videos of the two tankers that collided down the end of town. When there's a the big class A pumper sitting in station, and they respond with the smallest truck with the least amount of water on it, why is that? Why is it parked down here? All the guys are hanging behind a tanker. That if that leaked, that because there was leak, if that lit off, who's who's running through the flaming inferno to get the probably fully involved fire truck to, to go do something about it? And again, it comes down to the training. That I'm trying and. There's guys that want to do it, but they're being held back. And again, I've had a lot of private, unofficial conversations in Turkey Hill lot, parking lot, Dutch Way, and like I, I don't want to tell you this, but you know, and this is where that's where the fire marshal or something would have been great, but um, to have that oversight, and that's what they, they don't want anything to do with a, a certain group. They just they want to do what they're going to do. Well, the liability back on the township is the big yeah. issue that I'm trying to to fix because. Um, I don't want us getting sued. We're, yeah, so, but yes, uh, this is where a lot of these classes I've been going to, I've actually spoken to the PA State Fire Commissioner himself, Tom Cook, and he actually made me promise on a couple of things of what not to do, which we agreed, like they're certified firefighter levels. He goes, don't, don't push that initially. I'm like, oh no, that's part of my five-year plan. It's all right, five years is good. Well, it's the third year of my five-year plan. That's not five years away. And that's some incentives. Like, what incentive is there for the firefighters to go get that training also? That what can we come up with, whether it's the township, the fire company? You know, like where I grew up in Kingston, the fire department, as a volunteer, we were held to the same standards that our career firefighters. We were certified firefighter one, firefighter two, which is a big deal. You get, it's again, it sounds funny, the cool firefighter two patch on your sleeve. Nobody around us had that. They pushed us for that. And when we do that, okay, we get a leather helmet. That's a big deal for firemen. Well, back then they were two or three hundred dollars. Now they're two thousand dollars for that helmet. Like, yeah, I don't think we're buying those. But they can do that in-house on their own. But what and that's meaning meaning with them is what your expectations are, what we expect as a governing body, well, as you guys, what we expect them to do. And I compare it to all the departments around us basically what our norm is because we can't i had one you're just trying to make us a paid department no absolutely not there's no money for that and but you we there is a great group of volunteers what's that if there's a fire tax it would be oh yeah. no. i honestly yeah. i still don't think we would warrant you know yeah. maybe yeah. honestly at the most i would ever probably see in a few years from now is maybe a a paid driver during the day from like eight to four each day during mm -hmm. the week which is you typically when these guys get out and that's why I can't fault them. They, they're good. They get the rigs out. They put fire out. There's other issues that I'm not going to talk about here on the public forum, but yes. So I'll reach out again. Cause I I'll talk to Steve about the workers comp thing. 
but I'll, I'll ask him about, uh, you know, October, November timeframe about possibly having a uh, uh, group meeting. Melissa, if you could get me more information as to what sure. grants might be available, and so that we could both bring this, bring that to the table, say, hey, listen, if you know we did X, Y, and Z, then you may be able to get these kind of funding. So, oh, there's lots of grants for them, right? And I said because the state fire reporting system, which is still the state grant, is now up to twenty grand. It used to be ten, then it went to fifteen. Now it's twenty thousand. They can get that. Was that's that? What you said, fourteen thousand. So he gets the 14 well that was relief money that's, that's not yeah. the, that's not the state fire commissioner's grant if you have certified firefighters in certain levels of documented training you get more money from the state i mean the training is already paid for by the state so it's not like you're, it's costing you money to get the certification it's time for people yeah um, it's it's getting people out of the mentality of this is the way we've always done it. Right. So the right the number one issue is the make sure that they're giving us whatever whatever is state mandated for them to give us every yeah. month or quarter. I, I, I mean, year. I personally, I'd like to see us get into the governance model, or even if it's something like the police report, where they give us a thing that hey, we responded to this many calls, yeah. we had this many this, we had this many this. Yeah. Here's the finances. Like it doesn't have to be the full budget. It's well, we had billing to. The, the, the tune of $30,000 yeah. this month, and we did fundraising, we had $5,000. Like, that's the can higher you imagine level. If you're sending that out in a quarterly newsletter, how much better they are going to look to the public? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to buy that. I think that the public would really appreciate them a whole lot more if they actually knew what was going on. Like, it, just as simple as how many calls do they make a month? I don't know. Yeah. And that's I where see them. I you, see them you once can a month. It's not an option. You you require them. I want a monthly formal report on a department letterhead. How, how many calls you had? How many people responded? How many man hours were put into that? Because we need to track that stuff during any kind right. of major disaster. And I've asked for it in the past. I said I need to know how many guys and hours stuff like that. Never got it. I mean that's FEMA reimbursement. We actually get the guys paid for responding during those you know state and federally declared disasters, but. It's one of these things, and I, I've, you know, at 33 years in the fire service, starting here in PA, the issue in this state, and I've been through departments that have had mergers and what, nobody wants to give up their control of their little fiefdom. And, and the thing is, this department has a really good group, a core group of good guys. It's, you know, usually whenever there's an issue in a, in a business, it's a problem with the leadership. So, hmm. um, and the only other thing, when I, I was going to say, so now that I'm up there, I was talking to Dronic a little bit. When you guys, whoever's going to meet with Gephardt or whoever, that's me on Monday. Um, ask also about any of the law enforcement grants for any of the aggressive driving and whatnot. And I talked to Brian. They, they, they on they're signed up with that through Topa Hawken. They used to get grants and stuff as far as Marion was concerned. Because I asked them, I said, what does it cost to put an officer down here? Because it would be an overtime rate. I said, to sit them here on William Penn in town and just watch the track. Because, I mean, I have people passing me every day when I'm coming in at the speed limit. And they're blowing by me like I'm standing still. Yeah. Because it's about five, five, five fifty um, a day for an officer to sit down here for an eight to ten hour day for overtime. So he goes, you guys can do that now. I'm like, but again, we need the money for that. But there's, I, there's aggressive... Uh, PennDOT actually puts out those grants, but what there's got to be other things. There's, there's they have discretionary funding, like okay, you know, senator, congressman, whoever. Like, can you get us ten thousand dollars? That could be twenty days to have officers out here. You know, if it's two or three hours in the morning or two or three hours in the afternoon for a couple of weeks, really do a good targeted enforcement. Because I know when I'm sitting at the bus stop in the morning, there's people coming from Wilmersdorf heading heading east or west. They are flying. And you can tell, you know where the bumps are, where you need to slow down when you're on the road enough. And you see when they're going airborne, you know they're going. Mm. And still getting past when I'm the 35 coming up the hill and I drop right at the farm where the has, has the semis up here, I always drop right down to 25. I may cheat over a little bit to prevent people from passing just because it ticks me off. But at some point, I'm going to get hit. So, But I asked him about that. He goes, yeah, we can do targeted enforcement, but again, it's one of those things you know, that's above and beyond. Yeah. So grant-wise, we have... They go off of crashes through PennDOT for that extra enforcement. We don't have enough crashes here yet, but 
listen, we just, okay, we have people passing the double yellow a hundred times a day. Yes. So now they, they do have targeted enforcement as far as 422 and, yeah, uh, and 419. But I mean, and talking to Larry, he's he's been pulling cars at 70, 80 miles an hour out here on, on 422 and faster. And I know our fines have caught, are, are more than double. We have like a special award for Larry. Mean, and if you yeah. look at the reports, they're almost always over the speed limit. Yeah. Yeah. Until, you know, our state rep and our state senator didn't even have to, they had bumped that tree down. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, they don't have to really. Look very hard to find it. Yeah. Right. And Joswiak is a uh, law enforcement. I think yeah. that's what he has been asked so That's a good point. We should so definitely it ask shouldn't him. be hard to convince him to. Last year that somebody got hit on it? Um, what year before? I think it was over the. Yeah, on, for, on William Penn. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know, like, obviously, people driving way too fast. It is a concern because you, you have, I've, I've seen it. I wouldn't personally want to walk on that stretch of the road because yeah, of that. But yeah, people, yeah. I see people try to cross, and it's like it, hmm. you're playing Frogger. Um, so, you know, okay. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. All right. So, La back to 29. Yep. Uh, number 30 on the agenda is the stormwater management okay, ordinance. So are you making the motion for 29 or not? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, I'll make a motion to authorize the disbursement of the $14,000, uh, $14,018. Uh, to the Marion Fire Company Relief Association and to complete Form 76B. Second. Irene, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the reminder. Uh, next, point 30, is the Stormwater Management Ordinance and Fees Update. Um, Chuck is doing a little bit on that. I know around the little care package to simplify that. And then we just need to go through and sit down with him, ideally at one of the workshops and go through the fees. So I put this back um, on because a gentleman in, in the township was going to be here this morning to offer his opinion about stormwater fees. Um, if you want me to take it off again, I will. No, leave it, leave it on. Leave it on. I, honestly, I'd like maybe next month at the workshop, assuming we don't have 31 items on there. Yeah, well, um, once the culverts are done, that'll yeah. take some off. Yeah, I, I want to talk. The, some of that Type 7 stuff is done. Yeah. yeah. Meeting. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I want to do is I want to sit down with Chuck, and I had mentioned that to Chuck at the last meeting, and have him say, like, yeah, this one makes sense. Yeah, this one doesn't. Because um, he, he really knows what they are and what they should be cost-wise. We have zero frame of reference so i would say leave it on for the time being and we'll try to get some time with chuck at one okay. of the things even if we just say look well, we're not touching it this meeting but it's staying an agenda item okay. um the final thing is the proposed budget i know sue you had kind of given us an impromptu wish list of certain things yeah because that's starting to take yes a i will i will begin looking around for a suitable laptop replacement uh, as that one has gotten old um i'm gonna continue to look at what we need to and do with the microphones, microphones. Yeah, I'll 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 get something. Yeah. I just uh, bought a new one last night on sale for eleven. Yeah, I, what I want to do is keep an eye on like Black Friday deals and see if something crops up because they usually put out flyers for Black Friday about a month in advance. I mean, um, it's already about. It doesn't need to be in advance because basically yeah. all they do is record them. Yeah, day. and that's I'm I'm kind of thinking we might even be able to get away with like Zoom a, a Chromebook or something. What? A Chromebook. Just as long as I can zoom on it or yeah. zoom on it or whatever. Oh, yeah. Our, yeah. our, our um, monitors still have to cameras. Yeah. Well, do you want to get? I can get cheap webcams. No. No, this is fine. I mean, you don't have to use the webcams. They have ones that have a little like a no, privacy thing on it. Um, is that webinar? Yeah. I mean, I why? Why have? Show everybody in it. Yeah. But 
Yeah. That's, I'll see. I'll yeah. bring in those couple that we're getting rid of. They yeah. may be newer than hers and yeah. may be able to be used. Yeah. So I'd be I happy can, to give them to Depending them. on what they want. They're, they're certainly going to be newer than that thing. So I can, I can make them function. Like I said, let's do a webcam. Get a cheapy one for 20 bucks and it's perfectly good. And then if you don't oh. want to use it, you just turn it off. I'll collect those up and get them to you. Okay. Hopefully Thanks, you can use them. Speaking of that, um, I got to turn in the slip for the monitors, computers. Um, we do have word on here because yeah. I know at the um, one public comment meeting we had for the 37, I was actually typing. typing. Yeah. yeah. The meeting and was I, I picked up that uh, license, the five seat license that I, somebody was selling it on eBay. Um, for Office 2016 for 40 bucks. So the two new computers have Office installed locally on them. I'm going to install Office on this one. Whatever laptops we get, we have up to five seats that I can I can assign it to. Mm -hmm. So um, we have that regardless of what we're going to use equipment-wise. Um, and that, um, I don't know, Melissa, if you've heard from the vendor about the G1 licenses. Um, yep. I think Irene wrote the check. This needs to be okay. signed. It's it's signed out. out. Yeah. But um, yeah. after that, Microsoft's yeah. going to pass it through yeah. in a safe. Perfect. So yeah. with yes. that said, that saves us, because I got the, the license for the local office install, that saves like 16 bucks per per yeah. license a month. Nice. Um, yeah. So um, I don't have anything else. I'm, I still got to get my wish list together. And once we have everybody's, I'll start pushing it into the budget so that we can review it ideally at next month's workshop. Um, I've covered everything in comment other than um, Sue or Melissa. Can you send me the contact that we have for Dutch Valley? Because I want to talk to them about the like, little league field. The who field? Uh, like our, our little league ball field. Oh. Like I, we had that person that had reached out to us about the um, – the, the well, 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 I mean, it's Lerda. about the fence. Yeah. Um, the the Lerda stuff. The, yeah, if you can send me his contact information, I want to talk to him. And it may not be him; it may be somebody yeah, else like at Dutch Valley. Way. But I'd like to see if they would be willing to sponsor the ball field, and we do some improvements, a fence, maybe some other things. We put up a sign that it's like it's the Marion Township Dutch Valley little yeah. league field. And nice. then we approach other local businesses like Ace or True Value, Boyers, etc., and say, hey, for Two hundred dollars a year, we get a sign made and it hangs on the fence. And we use the fifty dollars because um, that's what they have the banner program. In. Well, and that's and that's yeah. fine. But we, yeah. we we use it as advertising yeah. space. It's an annual thing, and then we can yeah. use some of the proceeds of that to maintenance. fund the maintenance. Two fifty include the banner. Uh, no. You I supply the banner. I could no. Well, I could we'll, out more we'll figure out the too. finer yeah. points of it. But yeah, I, I mean, no, I'm not, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'd like and to, to put it on the list. I think that would be a, yeah. a neat thing, but I'd like to get a yeah. anchor sponsor. I think Dutch Valley would be a good partner anchor. for that. Yeah. Or yeah. we're going to like, hey, we're the bank. Yeah, we're, yeah, I mean, we could get yeah. the bank to advertise, but I know Dutch Valley yeah. has shown a, yeah. a commitment to investing in the community in the past. Yeah. That we say, hey, I know it's it's a bunch, but it's a good community reinvestment thing. Technically, donate some of it to the community association uh -huh. to limit the tax write off. But uh -huh. we would like to, to see like a, a uh -huh. 10 year sponsorship. You give us 10 grand, and for the next 10 years, that's the Dutch Valley Little League deal. Yeah. That I think it would be go a, a, a huge distance on showing their commitment to the community. And it would also provide a benefit here because then we can advance with the retrofit the little like block building. We can get the Bleachers, we get a better backstop. Yeah. We could do the stuff with the dirt every year as part of that so that it's well maintained. It would pay for the time for the road crew to do it. Yes. Um, so I, I'd great. like to have that conversation with somebody and see if they they jump on it because they're a big enough business that, again, 10 grand is going to be like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, so, uh, Irene, do you have any comments? Let me jump on that. Yeah. Since at the last meeting, there was just like, who was supposed to leave into the ball fields and the park? Can we straighten that out? Who was supposed to maintenance it? Well, it's a road crew. So okay. like, we, we've been paying Don Height to mow that. Okay. So then Don Height needs to understand that when he is maintaining the park, if he does so as road crew, he is not doing it as the Marion Township Community Association. I mean, if he wants, yeah. if somebody wants to volunteer time to right. go and, and weed, right. that's fine. But right. we have, we have year over year over year, it's not been a huge sum of money, but we have paid out road crew time specifically for 
the mowing and maintenance of the park. Okay. So then that needs to be clarified for Don. Did anyone pick up the plastic wrap that was on the multi-use port for the... Um, yeah, they said they did it. Did they pick it up? Okay. Just kind yeah. of curious about yeah. that. Yeah. 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 It's gone. Okay. Yeah. Hand over for others so we can yeah. Yeah. The plastic was picked up, but uh, we still, there's still those uh, barrel bags on there. Right. Well, you know what? It is it is road crew responsibility. Butch, if it's not done, please get out there, take care of it, and that's that. I'm not yep. having this nonsense back yep. and forth anymore. They, we they, are grown ups, and, and I'm tired of this kind yeah. of, of, of pettiness. Yeah. They're waiting. They're waiting till they get their trailer. Nope. And all that. No, no, no. Move it. No. Move it. Put it. Stack it somewhere, nice and neat. Yeah. But, but at, uh, at are, the end of the day, it's. Allowed, are we allowed to take the locks off the gates of the building? It's court? property of the Yeah, it's our. It's our. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I don't know where that lock came from. The gates are locked. Ultimately, it's it's township property. So I don't so. know where that stuff came. From. That's yeah. okay. We know how to and, get through. And Don don't yeah. know either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This this week, please make sure those locks. Yep. Okay. One one way or the other. Okay. Right. If there's any. I I have a key to the one lock, but I don't have a key to the other. Lock. Yeah. yeah. I just asked someone the other day when the next meeting was because they they never it's notify me, but then they complain year. when I don't show up. Second yeah, Thursday. October 12th. So I'll be there and I'm going to ask a lot of questions. I thought there was real urgency with this trailer months ago. Right. Well, I think the, the gentleman that was doing it uh, had some medical things. So I think that's. There was urgency it. then, but there hasn't been any urgency well, since. Well, most, most things are hurry up. That's the unfortunate reality of life. But I. I was a little, I'll say, taken aback by the the hostility there. On it, it, it was August. Like, yes, I know everybody's busy. I'm busy. I put things off. I'll be the first to admit that. But don't get upset about it. Say like, yeah, it, it got left go. We should have done it sooner. Our bad. That's all. That's all that needs to be said. And then we move forward with life, and we make sure next year that it gets taken away in March. Um. And again, like I said to Kelly, if you don't have the manpower to do it, call me. My schedule is busy, but I'll mm -hmm. try and find a time. Right. I'll work with you guys to find somebody right. who can come out and help control the tarpo. But, like, they don't have the manpower because they don't want anyone else in their group. They don't we, they have no community outreach. They don't reach out to the younger kids. They could certainly go over to the high school and say, hey, you know, we have we are the Marion Township yeah. Community Association. Well, they, they don't so, want to do anything more than I, what they're doing. I don't know if that's fully true because, like with the car show, I'll use the car show as an example. She did. Kelly got right. a bunch of people to volunteer, right. but we just have to have somebody on right. the community association who's willing to do that right. repeatedly. But but I I've been to their meetings and they just keep on hashing back the same thing. When you try to introduce the idea, hey, did you know as a five hundred one c three you could have reduced mailing? You can do this as a fundraiser. You can do that as a fundraiser. And I just put these funny looks. And this is when I was still relatively new on the board. They don't want any fresh faces in there. They don't want any fresh ideas. They just want to keep on doing the same thing that they're doing. They want to put blame here. You know, this back and <laughs> forth. We're not doing this. You're not doing that. Well, you know what? If, if anyone asks who maintains the, the park, we've got the official. It, it is the township. The permit as in the past when we had organized playgrounds. Well, it's not yeah. there. We don't have yeah. a problem with that. Right. Yeah. It's not there anymore. Yeah. It's not there. You know, and I guess I'm confused because the community association, when I started here, they like started back up saying they wanted to make the park nicer. Mm. That was going to be their project. Yeah. So, but I'm confused then, like, why are they kind of saying that it's the township's problem when they wanted to do that as a project? I'm, I'm just yeah. not, that's my confusion. Oh, yeah. I, and if they can't, if they don't have the means or the manpower to do that, they just have to talk. To it, right. Right. When, uh, when they when they wanted to get new equipment, uh, uh, the township the township owns the place. Right. And and that's why they can't get no grants right. to do it. Because we own um, they right. don't own yes, but no. Yeah, yeah. Because, because, when I 
when I sat down and I said, okay, show me the grant. It was Peter's outline. When I said, okay, you just have to do X, Y, and Z. You have to get contracts. You have to do this. I gave them a list of things to do. No one did it. The day before the grant uh, proposal was in, it was like, you did all the stuff that you were willing to do the work for. I didn't do the work for I took over for a uh, I said, what are we doing with it? Same thing. Huh? And, and I told Tony and Time and time after this, give give the give you guys uh, ideas what you want to do, and 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 we know, he, right. he's going to get it. Right, it's it's going to be part of the whole building, and when we do the building, yeah. we've got to do, redo the park. Period. End of scene. It is not ADA friendly. It is like. Again, when I first moved here, I thought it was someone's so backyard. There's, there's so many, yeah. there's so many different ways right. that we can approach this. Right. We're not the only municipality anywhere that has right. auxiliary right. that does things. So, and I'm just going to throw this out there. There's multiple ways to do this, but one of the easiest ways to do this is the charitable association fundraises. Marion Township Municipality goes for the grants, and part of that right. grant is a letter of commitment from right. the auxiliary right. saying. We have fifty thousand dollars that we're going to contribute to this park project. Right. Boom, that's easy. Businesses made, or whoever donates right. get the charitable right off. Donate, they do everything and they push it. And Kimberly, Kimberly Research that yes. said they yeah. can't complete the grant. Yeah. Yeah. They, they can't they themselves. Not that's own. that's not a be all end all. We right. submit right. the grant right. and they right. say right. we're we're right. gonna only have whatever amount of money. Right. 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 Suggestion. Right. 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 And this is what we're gonna get. Uh, I told give us a break. So, so what we we'll came up with that for me? Two weeks ago, oh, yeah. We're that sells it. playground equipment. He's yeah. relatively local. It, it'll get some. Okay. And he said there are grants out there yeah. for this. If we well, want to do anything, we should just call him. He'll help us. Yeah. So, one of the, one, this is going back many years now, but one of the ones that I had looked at and I had spelled out in that, yeah. that brief that I had given them with the application packet was there are companies that if you say, hey, we submitted for a DCNR grant that we're asking for 40 grand, there are companies that will match that dollar yes. for dollar where they say, okay, you've got 40 grand in grant money. You've got $5,000 that you're bringing to the table. We'll give you $90,000 of equipment that you can match that, right. that grant. But we like, have to know what they want right. yes. before it, we can get right. started it with things. It's going to part of the whole property. Yeah. Get yeah, and then yeah. Jim, I think definitely go to the next meeting. Right. Yeah, but we need. Uh, I used to go. Yeah. So as long as one of us is there, asking the hard questions, doing the poking, the prodding, trying to keep the relationship there, we just have to try to get them into the right mindset of yes, there are certain things that you can and cannot do. It's the same thing with the trailer, where there are things. Legally have to do. It seems like an annoying pain in the ass, but you legally have to do it. We have to have an agreement in place. We have to have documentation. We have to have to keep a list of things in case there's theft or damage or whatever. It's it's a pain. We get it, but it's it's the reality of things. We have to do that same thing with the playground project, saying, you know, you guys can't directly apply for grants. It's a pain. This is how it is. Here's how we navigate that. And and unless to so your yeah, well, it, it, needs something. Yes. Right, right. When, they, when they when they discussed the picnic, <laughs> it was brought up. Do we need a dozen buns or two dozen? Really? Yeah, yeah. Buy two and dozen. Are you only expecting twenty four people to show up? Buy, buy two dozen. Yeah, and that's if you don't, obviously what they were expecting. And if you don't get, get the word that we're just trying to get. I mean, aside, at least a hundred here to go. Just buy the two, and if you don't use one of it, donate it to the food bank. Right. Pretty easy. Done. Um. So yeah. Uh, Irene, any other comment? Yeah, no, okay, right. Jim. No. Melissa. No. Oh, Except I'd like to double one, the budget. Let me go through the round. Melissa. No. Sue. No. John. John, oh, right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's an easy question. What What all are the properties that Marion Township owns are here and across the street? This. This. Oh, it's, it's one big parcel, one and it's this. Parcel. Okay, because one class... I just took here two, three weeks ago. Was the debris management class? Was if we have an incident, lots of trees down, stuff like that, 
when the road crew brings that debris in right. into a location, we cannot go on on the private property. We can't put it on private property. We can't retrieve trees down from private property, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But what I wanted to go with, that's why I actually started reaching out to some of the other EMCs in the area. I met with Culpa Hawkins Butch, Lester, mm -hmm. like, um, on a like a group, the a mutual aid agreement, let's say, because we alone will never have enough for FEMA reimbursement on a major incident. But as several of the groups together, we would then be able to meet the minimum threshold for how many cubic yards and whatnot. It's just where is everything going to go? Because um, I mean, it could be it could be bad enough. You would fill that field with with trees if we had a bit major wind event. And then, you know, then everybody else goes nuts and stuff like that with that. But if we have something, um, yeah, that I want to start working with the other EMCs, talk to the other townships. Yeah. So right, next meeting. Yeah. Right. Oh, yes. For next time. Okay. So, Butch, do you have anything that you want to say or can I adjourn the meeting? <laughs> well, somebody, somebody was uh, just talking to me about uh, that. Uh, uh, we, we could get a, uh, a permit to go like uh, over here to there's a Richland place that takes. We we had a permit in the past, uh, and it would yeah. cost forty bucks a, Lynn, uh, Lynn. A, a year. If if you should be in favor of them getting a permit, yeah, for forty bucks a I drop a bucket. I mean, even if yeah. it's even it if it was fun. even if it was eighty dollars, that's still. Mm -hmm. That opens the door. You know, that we load it on the truck, take it right over. Right over. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to drop it. Put off and we, I, we should probably find out the details of yeah, it, but yeah. I can call. yeah. And uh, we got this uh, boom more tractor, and I ought to take it in the shop to get the fillers changed. And yeah, so so is that technically going to be an expenditure? Can you put it on the agenda for Thursday night? It's, that routine, maintenance. it's routine maintenance, yeah. yes, but it would be better if we just motion to authorize it that way. It's what official. Are we doing repair on the uh, just maintenance on the mower, filters, oil, any any items that need to be addressed as or part any of any equipment. Uh, just the the, the, the boom mower. Yeah. 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 Some uh, of the yeah. Are amazing. Well, but, call them up. But, uh, but we'll they. They 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 told me two or three times they wrote it on the paper. I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so one one thing real quick. You you think, but one thing that Butch and I were talking about is we actually have a large tractor mounted snow blow that has been sitting unused because many years ago when the first John Deere was bought, it doesn't fit. It doesn't work. Boom mower tractor does oh, so we can sense. actually for this year we can put the snow blower on that thing and have the other one running a plow that one running a snow blower in addition to the two trucks going out and possibly the greater if we have so uh, if anybody complains about the new tractor it's it's an all seasons thing we can trim during the the, the spring and summer and fall and we can snow blow during snow blend events in the winter now because we had a, a very nice snow blower sitting out there that's just been collecting dust for many years. Uh, if it's an actual no declared snow emergency, yes. You you the, the requirement for a CDL. Is that I I would have to I think we declare a snow emergency. Yeah, but I'm just saying I think the requirement is local. We'd have to check. We'd ask, but I know that is written in as an exception that if there is a snow emergency, the requirement for a CDL goes out the window. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. No. 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 Typically, if, if like the school players are responding. Yeah. Yeah. I, all right. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, time is now 12.09. Second. Irene. Second. Roll call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Take care, everybody.